Kerr, reporting for duty. Hello folks, good evening, good evening, welcome back. Hello Shaitan, hello Beric. How's everything going? Hmm. Saturday time. We started with Act 4. Now that, we've, now, that we've, now that we've been demoted and sent on a suicide mission, I feel like I'm a kind of... Like we're the, we're the maverick cop in a, in, in a kind of old... In like We're basically like the maverick cop in, a, in like an old 80s action film. What's what's um, lethal weapon? It's not, is it Maverick lethal weapon? The the the, 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 um, the, the Mel Gibson's character. He's like, he, does he have a whole sign? I forget. It's Murtaugh is is Dan Glo is Danny is Dan Glover. I forget what what. Uh, Hey, Tosi, what? Uh, the other one's called. They're like, we're, 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 we've been demoted for being too good at our jobs and sent on a suicide mission. Because of course we have. Because of course we have. Ah. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope, Beric, are you still, are you still on your Lancer binge? You, how's your, how's, how does the Lancer conversion going along? But we are back. We're still, we're still, we're still, we're so recent after the last fight that our, our short, Buffs are still ticking over. Martin Riggs is the character's name. Okay. Does he have a call sign? Mark is Martin, because Maverick is Top Gun. And he oh, and um Gibson was in a movie called Maverick. I'm not sure if I've got anything I'm missing now. Eh. So I was I was just like look, while I was waiting for things to load and for like music to play, I was waiting for I was having a look over here. Um, 
Our Bear's Endurance is giving us a plus four, and so is the Belt of Physical Form, and we're the only person using Belt of Bear's Endurance right now, so Bear's Endurance is actually now useless to us. Uh, so actually, if I go into the buff screen, you can you can remove Bear's Endurance entirely, because we don't need that anymore. That's no longer required. Um, bowl Strength. Still kind of necessary. Although, if you get Mass Bowl Strength... Martin Riggs, yeah, 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 that is the main character in Lethal Weapon, indeed. I guess Maverick is just like the noun for what kind of person he is, I suppose, as well. Uh, Resonance, Resonance, Build Strength. Like, Mass, all those things would not be, would not be a miss, because Mass Cat's Grace is relevant for everybody. Everyone, pretty much everyone can benefit from that in one way or another. Um... <laughs> hey, do you have... open to ideas. Is your dragon kind active? That's actually a good point. This is a good time for us to try to figure out. I want to rest at some point soon anyway. Because a lot of things have already been consumed. Mad Cop. Right, okay. Maybe? I can't remember. It's been so long since I've watched a Lethal Weapon movie. Did they stop at 4 or did they make any more? I forget. It's literally been that long. Um. So you can do black, blue... Brass, brass, green, silver, white. That's a weird mix. You get you get the you get the five chromatic dragons: black, blue, red, green, and white, and then two metallic dragons: brass and silver. Because silver gives you a cone of cold, whereas white gives you oh, are silver and white exactly the same. They are exactly the same. Brass is a 100-foot line of fire, whereas uh, red is a cone of fire. Um, there's a cone of acid, line of electricity, line of acid. Hmm. I'm thinking he was known as Chaos when he was a CIA assassin. The genocidal Project Phoenix in Vietnam. <laughs> Just right character straight into our crimes, huh? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> When the hell was Martin Riggs in a CIA assassin protocol? What the hell is that? When? Four films plus a TV show. Like, what? Like, what? Martin Riggs was a CIA assassin? Like, okay, sure, I guess. But does that ever come out in the movies? Like, I have never heard that before in my life. Anyway, okay, so honestly, honestly, let's turn into dragon. Let's turn into like turn into like a metallic dragon because that is that's good. It came up in the very did it really? Holy hell! To be fair, I think Lethal Weapon One is the one I've watched the least. I think. Which is the jet? Lethal Weapon Four is the one with Jet Li, isn't it? Where he's insane. I'm so good at guns. Oh, they they give him a reason why he's insane. Okay, just being Mel Gibson isn't reason enough apparently. Um. Your dragon kind silver, and you can still cast spells, and you still ha you can still keep all your buffs. So anyway, you, what's your stat line now? Crazy strength, crazy de uh, strength and con. So, so, so um, dragon kind silver for fifteen minutes. You have a strength bonus to sink. Um, your AC is now plus eight, which means. It's it's depressing that your AC is still twenty three when you're a silver dragon. Um, damage reduction of magic, frightful presence, immunity cold, immunity movement is increased. You can have bite attack and two claws. Just still not worth. It's still not worth doing. All this is doing is making it a little bit more resilient. All this is doing is make it a little bit more resilient because it makes your AC high, it increases your AC, increases your constitution, so increases your HP. And gives you an immunity to, to thing, and gives you some fractal presence as well. Because other than that, there's no real reason you don't get like you're not going to get anywhere near good enough um, melee attacks here. Like, melee attacks don't do enough damage and stuff like that, etc., etc. Eh, interesting. Hmm. He said he shot a man with a sniper rifle at a thousand yards in Laos. Of course he did. Um. Interesting. Right. Uh, <laughs> the 
I, I was gonna have like dragon envy at this point. Um anyway. Alright, we've learned everything we wanted to do here. We got the portal key. Time to open the portal and press on. Evidently there was a TV show from 2016 to 2019. Didn't even know that. They didn't have Gibson play rigs for obvious reasons. Yes, obvious reasons. And also it's gonna have killed rigs in the show, which is a surprise. <laughs> it's just like, no, you're never playing this character again. Fuck off. Did they have Dan Glover for Myrtle in the TV show? Because I, don't, I, don't, I haven't seen Dan Glover in anything for ages. I think Dan, these days, the, the last things, I can't remember what I saw him in, but he seemed to have transitioned to like the person in a position of authority who is evil or is like bad. So like, it's like, oh, member of a government. Like, he, in my mind, he's transitioned to like the person you will have like be the head of a government agency or something who is crooked in some way. Implying that some of them are not um, But like, he, Damon Wayans play Myrtle. Which one's Damon? I get the main, I get the Wayans brothers confused because he look because the last my last ex, my last explosion to Wayans brothers was a long time ago. Right. Open the portal. Let's get out of this place. Let's begin the pursuit at once. Oh. Oh, yeah, I need to voice you, don't I? Damn it. Um. I'm sure, you have this up properly. Hello, baby. Onward, wherever this road may lead us. After approaching the portal, Angel says, "Heaven above, just look at that." I see the pattern of sky-piercing spires, spires and steep domes set against the midnight sky. This is Illusionera, the damn city of Nocticula. That's where our enemies were heading. You think you're quick, huh? Well, I am quicker. Whee! The angel's blade is just a moment too late to touch the skin of the demon who rushes into the portal. That cunning creature stole our key. The portal is inactive again. I swear even the lowest of the abyssal creatures... I swear even the lowest of the abyssal creatures are disgusting and despicable. <laughs> I've got a second key. <laughs> this portal leads to Lucianera. What could this mean? Riggs was played by some guy named Clayne Crawford. Never heard of him. Neither have I. It means we'll be looking for a particular clutch of demons among thousands of their kind. Lucianera is a real demonic metropolis. It's huge and macabre. It is a little safer, or rather, a little less dangerous than the other corners of the abyss. Lady Nocticula loves having visitors, including those from other planes, and she doesn't like, like, does not like it if her guests are dying every day in her city. But if it happens quietly and without too much attention, her black heart won't even skip a beat. You must be twice, even thrice as careful in this nest of sin. A hive of scum and villainy. Uh, will we all have to move forward altogether? I do not think that will be necessary. We need an outpost in the abyss, and it will be best if we build it right here, far from the larger demonic settlements and close to an active portal that will allow us to return here at any time. All your companions that are currently unoccupied should take care of guarding and setting up the camp. Okay, so this little fort, this little this thing, this little area is our camp now, I think. Well, I've got a second key. The demons' plots cannot stop us, but we still haven't had much success in countering them. That is why we must take, make haste and move onward. Okay. Because we, we didn't give me the option. I don't want to say, I want to go check the other portal, damn it. Let's go. Let me tell you something, champion. We are going to Lucianera, the city of cunning and seduction. As sad as I am to admit it, we are unlikely to find our enemies in the hindering crystals they took without the aid of the denizens of this hideous place. If Hepsamira has something to do with all this, we will need another demon that matches her powers. We will need to find a way to make contact with one of the city's rulers. On that point, we now know that there is a conflict brewing between Nocticula and Baphomet. I will not be welcome in this dark place, but I have prepared for this. The angel seems truly proud of his plan. I will cast a spell on myself so that not a single denizen of this plane whose soul is devoted to evil will be able to see or hear me. Invisible, I will follow you and protect you from all dangers and temptations of this place as best I can. The demons will be unaware of my presence. Now, let us go. By the light and the sword. You're doing basically what, um... Uh, what the storyteller did. Okay, we are now in this lower city. Back to the Nexus, okay, hang on. 
Judging by the nice surroundings, these are the slums of Lucianera, Nocticla's capital city. The abode of beggars and vagabonds, it is impossible to descend any further, except into the waters of the ocean itself, where the bodies of the unfortunate are dumped. I'm gonna quickly head back to Nexus, real fast. Sure, reporting hey, for duty. Right. Okay, we're back at base here, and people can we can have a people everyone's everyone's hanging around, and this is now a bit morphed into a base. And the inheritor? Here, far from the eyes of strangers, I can assume my true my true form, but in Lucianera I will remain hidden. It seems this sorrowful and unsettling place will be what we call home, at least for a time. Inaga warned me about the danger that the portals the closed portals pose. Before we move on, we need to take care of that. I am not well versed in such matters, but perhaps we should set a trap for the demons near the dormant gates, in case they attempt to activate those portals again. What is our next step? We need to learn who holds the rings of power in Lucianera at present. Armed with this knowledge, we will be able to uncover Hepsimir's plan and thwart them. How well known am I among the denizens of Lucianera? No one in Lucianera knows your name, yet. That's gonna change. That sounds like our status check. That reads like a status check. As we get better, people will know my name more and more, and his responses to that question will change over time, I, was, I suspect. Tell me honestly, what do you think of the one you called Champion of Galarian? I would be lying if I told you that I don't observe you with some trepidation. Sometimes I wonder what will happen if you falter. For power and responsibility represent the most difficult trial of all, and many righteous souls have failed to pass it. I have a question about our mission. Then ask, then ask away. You must have a lot of questions. What can you tell me about the Abyss and demons in general? Demons. The Hand of the Inheritor speaks slowly and heavily, as if trying to break through some inner resistance. They are the youngest race of the Outer Plains, and the wildest in origin. Once, entirely different creatures used to rule the Abyss. Those were the Cliffoth, the embodiment of chaos. They were much less human-like. But then one entity conjured up the idea that primordial chaos could be mixed with an evil mortal soul, and that is how the first demon was created. No one remembers the name of the creator now, but the creations still live and prosper. They overthrew the Klepoth and became the essence, the soul of the Abyss, and I honestly cannot say which was worse, before humanity was added to it, or now. And what do you know about Lucianera? Chaos has many faces. When Chaos decided to manifest itself in a form of a city, Lucianera was born. There are places in the Abyss that are darker, bloodier, more dangerous and deceiving, but I cannot imagine a place whose significance would eclipse that of Lucianera. When Nocticula built the city, she employed everything of the essence that ever existed in the Abyss. Demons of all kinds from every corner of this gloomy plain live here. And what is more, the Lady in Shadow opened the city gates to visitors from other plains, and strangers swarmed the city. Merchants and travelers, mercenaries and explorers, mages and bards. Creatures from all plains, who, those daring enough to visit the Abyss, chose Lucianera as their destination. The city is divided by two sets of walls, between which lie the quarters open to outsiders. One set of walls protects Nocticula's guests from the rabble, and the poor, who are desperate enough to violate the ruler's orders for a chance to get coin or two. The other set of walls protects outsiders from the city's nobility, who can flout Nocticula's recommendations without any reason at all, merely on a whim. We do not think there is a single place in Lucianera that is safe, or danger lurks around every corner there. And what about Nocticula? The Lady in Shadow, the first of the succubi kin, and likely the most dangerous demon who have ever been spawned by the Abyss. I cannot tell you much about her, for she cunningly hides in the shadows, eluding the daggers of her foes and the schemes of her rivals. All I know is that she gained her power after she overthrew... Viravaxis, who was the Lord of Shadow Demons. She took his powers, his realm and his subjects, and that merely whetted her appetite. Many demon lords have perished since then, cut down by her treacherous and sudden strikes. With each foreign enemy, her power grew stronger and her glory greater. I cannot tell which of her weapons is more dangerous. Her unerring strikes? Her seductive charms, her unbridled courage, or her astounding stealth. You must beware all of these dangers. And what is so dangerous about Hefzimira? She is the worst of all of Baphomet's offspring. She gained this grim title in the bloody conflict with her own brothers and sisters, and she brutally wiped out everyone who stood in her way. She did not even show mercy for her own mother, and doomed her to cruel execution. As a reward for her eagerness and loyalty, Baphomet granted her the most granted her use of his most cherished tool, the Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth. However, now an even greater threat has arisen under Hepzimir's rule, unusually powerful demons, the source of whose strength is unknown and most dangerous to us. The Crusaders have encountered such demons only a scant few times, but should an entire army of such fiends appear, Dresden would fall, Erosian would fall, and all of Avistan would follow, and even Galarian would not stand a chance against them. 
putting an end to Zeb Zeru's machinations. That is our mission. I see you have blessed the rocks of this cavern. I was wondering about that. Indeed I have. Even if on Galarian, the Abyss's harmful influence can unsettle mortals and disturb their rest. What then can be said of the Abyss itself, the very heart of the pain and sin? But worry not, champion. I have, by the power granted to me by Ayomade, I have consecrated these dark caves. You can find respite here and recover your strength should the need arise. Okay, so this is the place where you can rest and clear corruption. I'd like to ask you a personal question. There shouldn't be any secrets between us, champion. The very instant that Queen Golfwe sent you to this dark place, I swore to myself that I would do everything within my power to ease your burden. Why did you follow me to the Abyss? Because my duty and my honor demanded that I do so. You were facing a great mission and a colossal challenge, while those who remained behind merely had the honor of protecting what you had already liberated from the demon hordes. My heart told me that my help would be needed here more. How does it feel for you to be in a place like this? This is not my first foray into the Abyss, although it is the first time I have come here to watch and talk rather than do battle. On more than one occasion, I and other warriors of heaven have descended to this evil and corrupted place to bring retribution to the vile and grant salvation to their victims. For better or worse, heaven and the Abyss cannot engage in open war, though it can recall some moments when we seem to teach on the precipice of just that. All we can permit ourselves are raids and skirmishes along the border. Is ultimate victory of the demons even possible? It is, but it is not the kind of victory you dream of. The Hand of the Inheritor remained silent for a while before speaking in a heavy, hollow voice. The Abyss lives while evil lives in the hearts of mortals. Demons don't just appear from nothing. Most of them originate from the souls of people who committed themselves to evil while still living. That is why war with the Abyss, should it ever start, may be never-ending. The place of each fallen demon will be immediately taken by a new one. That's why we on our only true chance to secure ultimate victory will be emerged only after we exterminate all the evil in the world. We must achieve a situation where not a single soul would voluntarily resort to evil deeds, when mortals themselves, by their own free will, turn to the light all at once. But no one in the universe knows how to achieve that, and many who have tried end up as tyrants and false prophets. May heaven guard me against such a fall. What are your thoughts with Galfrey's last order? Ayomade has never striven to rule over mortals. She has only guided and helped them. So I should follow her example and never try to interfere with your way of life or question it. What I will say is that I am certain of the necessity of our mission as I am the sharpness of my blade. What surprised me, and truth be told unsettled me too, is the cruelty with which my noble sister in arms, Galfrey, dispatched you here. The Queen has every right to give orders to her commander, but a right without righteousness is worth little. You say the commander. I'm not commander anymore. I was demoted. Is there anything you can help me with? I will follow you everywhere. Remaining invisible to our enemies will have not the slightest suspicion of my presence. When you need advice, I will give it to you. And when you are stricken by disease, I will come to your aid and dispel it. Okay. No matter how long you may have to travel through the abyss, you can always be sure that I am near and heaven has not forsaken you. How do you hide yourself from the demons? This magic spell turns me into an invisible spirit, hidden from the eyes of everyone who was born in the abyss and whose heart has been blackened by evil. Those who hail from other planes are capable of seeing me if they use magical sight of some kind, as well as those few whose willful fate was to be born and raised here, all carrying light and purity in their souls. But my protection from demons is very effective, and will work until I myself decide to appear in my true form to join the battle, or help in someone in need. Um, I want you to stop offering me Can you heal me? I have to go. You will face great challenges in this cursed place. Stay strong and remember the fate of Galarian depends on you. Okay. If you now... Yeah, so this is now the place where we can rest to get rid of corruption. Arrow? Arrow? Oh, wow. I'm sorry that your dream turned into a nightmare. Don't be sorry for me. It's all a part of my journey, and it would be very naive to imagine my path to redemption as a sequence of pleasant dreams only. I had already described my countless evil deeds to you. Mortals suffer from nightmares born of their past, and I am glad that I have had the chance to experience them as well. That shadow from your dream, who was that? Please don't ask. I don't want to be reminded of it. I knew him in the past, and I was hoping that he would never again reappear in my life. We both caused each other a lot of pain. Please, don't make me relive it all again. But why did they call you a venomous butterfly? I wish they doesn't look you now. I poisoned him. My lies, my capriciousness, my temptation. No, I can't. Let's talk about something else. I'm sorry, but I don't want to remember who I used to be and what I used to do to others. Cool. Um. Boop, 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 boop. Ivu? I am the dreadful dragon of destruction. I wreak chaos and devour the hearts of my foes. I am the dark knight of your futile hopes. And I'm not tiny at all. 
I just use my magic to become smaller and more agile. Yep. Whew. I scare away the demon's speech is hard. I need to keep practicing. Ivo, you've grown up a bit. Yep. The dragon looks incredibly proud of herself. Dragons usually grow as they get older, but I grow as your power increases. So don't be fooled. Remember, I'm still a kid. A huge scaled flying kid with planar magic at her disposal. Cool. Um... What else is around here? Because this is there's still this thing here, which I haven't figured out. I kind of wanted to do that first. Nenio is still a dragon. Um, it's time for the experiment. I hope these words inspire as much enthusiasm in you as they do in me. What's this experiment about? You see, I have decided, although dared would be a better term, to address an issue, which up to now I have preferred to avoid due to my total ignorance in this sphere. Nenio lowers her head in embarrassment. It is hard to realize that I believe that a person of... Uh, wow. It, I realize it's hard to believe that I, a person of, let's skip the false modesty, superior intellect, could not know something so simple. That it is never too late to fill the gaps in someone's knowledge, right? I'm talking about friendship. To be honest, at first I planned to assign the writing of this article for the encyclopedia to a co-author of some kind. But then I met you, my loyal follower, and suddenly I thought I could write it myself. Nenio seems to have reached the limit of her courage and looks away. So you've never had any friends? I see no sense in them. You trying to tell me you consider me your friend? You misunderstand me. I don't need friends. I have no desire to spend my time on them when I could spend it on new experiments and discoveries. Nenio explains this to you as though she's speaking to a five-year-old. I just want to learn what it is like to have friends. For the encyclopedia, nothing more. I realize that you would like to consider me your friend. Who wouldn't? I'm a scientific luminary, after all. So I do apologize for disappointing you. Well, if it needs to be done, I will do it. Let's get started. I'm glad you agreed. Many would have considered my request too personal and refused. It's good that you are above such squeamish sentiment. Here, I made a list. I based it on my observations of individuals around me and on my personal knowledge of the topic, which, I have to admit, is far from comprehensive. She hands you a crumpled piece of paper. Study it well. We'll start as soon as you're ready. Friends, smile at each other. Gossip about other friends. Drink alcohol together, no longer required because we've done that before. Sometimes argue, sometimes copulate. Then you really need to be introduced to a certain known. Who? Uh, Jubilost? She hates Jubilost. Or at least she is... She disregards Jubilost greatly. At least she's never met, she's never met him, but she's definitely well aware. Like she's writing her encyclopedia specifically to, like, oust Jubilost or something. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have to follow this list? Then he looks at you with disapproval. You're trying to say that I made it for nothing? I've developed a perfect methodology that involves all the mechanisms of friendship between two individuals. But by all means, sure, let's just abandon the list. Fine. Point number one, friends smile at each other. You raise your eyes to Nenio, who has already fixed a malevolent grin on her face, the kind that would make you soil yourself if you saw it in the dark of night. Respond with a brief smile. Keeping the unnatural grin on her face, Nenio hisses through the kind you call that a smile? Come on, try again. One skeptical look. Smile more. You must. For science. Fine. Your eyes bore in Nenio's, and she stares right back at you as you both grin as wildly as possible. A minute passes in tense silence. Ah! She masses her cheeks with both her hands. I have never imagined being a friend with such an exhausting business. So what's next on the list? Point number two. Friends gossip about their other friends. Oh, I've made some preparations for that. She produces several pieces of paper from her sleeve. Come on, let's get to it. Who are we going to gossip about? Um, Aru. Excellent choice. What do you think of her? Uh, she's a good friend in the cupboard at arms. Oh, how interesting. Incidentally, yesterday I saw her. Nenio picks up a random piece of paper and reads it. Drinking from a puddle. Do you have any idea who we're even talking about? Nenio becomes a little embarrassed, but only a little. No. I don't make a point of remembering those I travel with. That's why I prepared these universally applicable pieces of gossip. She raises her fist with several pieces of paper clenched into it. This doesn't sound like her at all. Really? Excuse me. I'll try again. Yesterday I saw her... eating worms. This is ridiculous. I fully agree. This all seems like sheer stupidity to me too. But how can we learn that stupidity is stupid without doing stupid things? You need to see the experiment through. She gives you a satisfied nod and stows her papers back in her sleeve. All right, stage two is now complete. What's next on the list? Point number three, friends drink alcohol together. Then it says no longer required. 
Oh right, I should cross out this point. I wrote this and then I checked the encyclopedia and recalled that I've already conducted that experiment. And judging by the Insane Encyclopedia, and especially by an odd stain on that particular page, it would be unwise, to say the least, to try and repeat it. Point number four. Friends sometimes argue. A new heap of papers appears in Ennio's hands. You are uninterested and disinterested in this experiment, and you can't even tell the difference between those two words. <laughs> what? You're such a freak that even Rovagug feels sorry for you. <laughs> your mouth stings so terribly, your backside's envious. You can kiss my ass. Not too creative, but it'll do. Now we can definitely be considered friends. On that note, I conclude the fourth part of the experiment. What's last on the list? Point number five. Friends sometimes copulate. Oh, yes, that. Then <laughs> he says, take off your underwear. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what? Now we're going to engage in the act of copulation for exclusively for the sake of carnal pleasure, bypassing the main purpose of all copulation, which is procreation. What part of that isn't clear? <laughs> eh, fuck it, why not? Oh. Uh-huh. Well, well, well. <laughs> she produces a piece of paper from her sleeve and frantically starts covering it in drawings. What are you doing? Before copulation, I must make a sketch of your genitals for the copulation article in the encyclopedia. The provided drawing will interest many students and scientists who know only of copulation through second-hand accounts. Please stand still. <laughs> How weird must it be, like, knowing, like, that, yeah, like, way back in the day, like, a long time ago, that you were the model for some bodily body part in an encyclopedia somewhere. <laughs> Just wait, go on, then. Anyway, was so engrossed with her task, she actually bites her tongue. It appears your copulation won't be happening today. <laughs> Keep standing there with your underwear down. Keep waiting and hoping, though it is obvious there will be no copulation today. <laughs> Many was so absorbed in her work that the world around her, including you, seems to have ceased to exist for her. I get to pull my pants up now? Hmm, what? Oh, it's you. Our friendship experiment has taken an unexpected turn. Many things for a while. Oh yes, copulation! Rest assured, my sketch I made was most detailed, and that one more, more than one generation of students will study it. Unfortunately, I don't remember your name, or else I would definitely credit you as the model. Alas. As for the original topic of the research, which was friendship, this thoroughly awkward experiment is finally concluded. I have learned what it means to be a friend, and now I can write an article about it for the encyclopedia. Nenyo rubs her nose with a pencil. I am happy that it is over. I am once again convinced that friendship is the most foolish of all occupations. You did it all wrong. Friendship is more than just smiling, gossiping, bickering, and sex. Is it? You've concluded all the assigned actions typical for two friends. Of course, I could have compiled an extended list, which would have included joint food ingestion and scentless banter with the aim of showing each other at least in the least attractive light, but how would that change the situation? Do you know that I, what I will write in the encyclopedia? Friendship is a set of primitive rituals intended to help individuals forget about their loneliness. However, I have no interest in that. I see my loneliness as a sign of my uniqueness. The one who leads the way is always alone. Now I have the time to answer your questions. Come on, ask away. Check out this mask I found. There's writing on the inside. Then he snatches the mask from your hands and examines it from every angle. It looks like an average mask. It smells like mold. It tastes like ugh, disgusting. The eye holes are. She puts the mask on and looks you, at you through it. Utterly unremarkable. And yet I sense some hidden magic in this mask. I'd bet my encyclopedia that it must be the answer to one of the riddles of those statues in the nameless ruins. The writing on the inside looks very much like one of the answers. With a sigh, she hands the mask back to you. All I have to do now is find four such masks and bring them to the statues. You won't forget to take me with you when you head to solve the rituals, would you? Better write it down somewhere. Nenio is extremely interested in visiting the nameless ruins after you find all four masks. Please tell me... Nenio is extremely interested in visiting the nameless ruins once you have found all four masks. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Okay, what do you have here? Walking on corpses. Try to secure an audience with the city's rulers. Uh, Art of Making Friends, Learn More About Lucianera's Leaders, The Conquest of Lucianera, Become Famous and Get an Octicular's Attention. Okay, we have to become famous for, this, for them to meet us, I guess. But yep, there's no there's no banging of Nenyo, it seems. Regal? Nope, nope. You don't have anything to say? Actually, hang on, do we have... Regal? Oh god, oh, Jesus Christ, there's even more people gotta level up now. Christ. Um oh, God heavens. Regal, um 
Honorable Judgment. You can take a uh, rebound. Full plate. At the time, full plate plus two. Uh, Grey board's got axes. No one's got axes here. Banshee's heart. Uh, Banshee's heart is a thundering glaive. Ooh, it's a thundering glaive. Socio, do you want a thundering glaive? Adamantine, enhancement plus three. Additional two uses of channel energy, or whenever you do a critical hit, all creatures in the 15 foot radius must pass a fair to save or suffer additional sonic damage or become prone for one round. But all, all creatures, which is including the mount that you're currently on, I think. Um, okay. That's, like just, that's just a dagger. That's like just a regular cookery. That's honorable judgment. That's mithril speed scimitar. That's rupturing storm scimitar. That's the regular scimitar. It's regular scythe. Speed corrosive short spear plus four. The blizz. Okay, hello. The blizz might be useful for you, Greybor, because it's a battle axe. What did it even get you? Um, Guardian's battle axe. I'll probably replace it, actually. Um, mithril? Doesn't matter. Flaming? Sure. Whenever it confirms a critical hit, the resulting sparks have a chance to ignite enemies around with a sacred fire. All enemies in the 10 foot range must pass a reflex saving throw or suffer holy damage for 1d4 rounds. Yeah, sure, we can, you can take that. Is that fire damage? And that's ice damage. Elemental barrage would be interesting for you. As an effect. Um, you're currently using... You can use heavy armor, can't you? Is there, reason, is there any reason for you not to use heavy armor? White Dragon is, a, is plus four breastplate. You can't use heavy armor, full stop. Okay, fine. Besides, you get more... You, you, you actually get more out of it than this. That's, that's going to be... That's 13 AC, this is 12 AC. Okay. Um... Slayer 15 gives you study targets 4 and sneak attack. Cool. You, I don't think I specifically haven't even think, thought about what to give you yet. Um, you got the you got the two weapon fighting stuff. You have outflank. You got dodge. Critical focus. Your skills like you got perception, okay, fine. Combat reflexes gives you seize the moment. You haven't got, it's not, I'm not taking you down the dazzling display arc because there's no point for that. You haven't got good perception anyway. Persuasion, I mean. Can you even get critical mastery and stuff like that? The critical. You can, looks like you can anyway. Critical mastery. You can't. Maybe you can pick it up as a Slayer talent? No, you can't as rogues, not as... You don't get Critical Mastery at all, ever. Because you're not a fighter. Okay. Um... Left hands, no... Mental focus, endurance, improved initiative, intimidating prowess, iron guts, iron hide, lunge. Honestly, take lunge. Because you can attack, at, you can attack at longer range. You can stay behind the front line. Then your mythic ability. You got. You have defensive study. Okay, unrelenting assault, claws, attacks, fighting mythic. Hey, collective fruit! We're now in Act 4, I think. Um, 
We've hit Mythic level 5. We're currently catching up some level ups here. Leading strike. It's a specific it says spell, right? They, they, they changed it specifically to say spell. Okay. It used to be, I think, that it used to it as any elemental damage. But now it's uh, specifically spells. So it's not, not, not going to work on your axes. Not incarnate. Nope. Boundless healing. What was a chance of abundant casting? Take leading strike. Yeah, Mythic 5. I don't think I don't think I don't think I have anything written down for you because again I haven't because I wasn't I'm never planning to have you in my party so I've never got anything written down for you at all. Um, so I just I'm just basically running through things. I really do have stuff written down for you. Um, because you have you are going down you are definitely going down the dazzling display line. Um, so you get more favorite enemy stuff. Uh, okay, so you get point point. Point, 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 point. Your feet is Shattered Defenses. Whenever you attack with your chosen weapon, someone who is, who is shaken, frightened, or panicked becomes flat-footed by your attacks until next turn. Basically, so you, if someone's afraid from, like, in presence or whatever. I'm right in the same area. I've also said I removed, removed from Crusade and couldn't get back to Dresden to rest and sell. I haven't I haven't even left the island yet, so... I haven't even gone... I, basically, I think I stepped in through the portal and came back immediately to, like, rest up and see what's over here. Um... Oh, so, uh, this, is, this is Demons of... We've done Demons of Magic. That's Demons of Strength. Demons of Humans. So we're gonna go for the last demons of the last demons we're missing, which is demons of slaughter. I think demons of magic again to to, to keep because here we have demons of magic, demons of magic, demons of magic, demons of strength, demons of magic, demons of slaughter. So we have favorite enemy everything, but we specialize in demons of magic, which means when we use um when we use our where is it when we use our instant enemy stuff. Basically, everyone gets punished as if they're the demons of magic. She's, she's, she, has, she gets, was it? Uh... Basically, yeah, we start hitting. As long as we have um, instant enemy, they all, we, we shoot everyone as if they're a demon of magic. Uh, then your mythic is bigger they are. Maybe the bigger they are. Uh, next is Regal. Again, I haven't really given you much thought either. Although you've hit level 10 Hell Knight at long last. So you're immune to fireball wearing armor, and you have you basically give your weapon axiomatic. Who's the huge dragon? Oh, Nanyo. <laughs> Nanyo has dragon kind as a spell. Um, I guess you're going down the. Um, we have improved critical, weapon finesse. Big dazzling display. It will work, it will work, it will work on things like dreadful carnage. And you can't do car. I think you, you, I don't think you can do car. Gone. Hang on. Cornugon smash. Which needs to be, you need to have power attack for Cornugon smash. Do you understand why more might become dragons? I do. Nope. I do not. Um, dazzling display. So you now you can you you can use your weapons to become axiomatic. Order of the God Claw. 
Hell Knight, Immunity to Fire. Uh, next, uh, you're a mythic. You've already got leading strike. Um, a mythic. Abundant smite chaos. You don't need abundant smite chaos. Let's be honest here. Last stand for you, possibly. You've already got, you've already got flawless, right? You haven't got flawless. Flawless attacks. Flawless. Is that, oh, that might be a feat. That might be a feat. Okay, in which case... Uh... Mm... Last stand, maybe? Bigger they are, I guess. You can hit bigger things harder. Uh, then Daeron... Oracle 15. Boop, boop, boop. Your feats for today. What do you have here? We have Extra Channel Oracle, we got Spell Focus Conjuration, we have Augment Summoning, Superior Summoning, Creature Spell Focus Augment Conjuration. Um, now you could do things like Enhanced Cures. Or you can do an animal companion. Friends to animals, you already have friends to animals. Combat healer, you already have combat healer. You can get you can you can you can get a companion, animal companion if you wanted to. More pets for more pets for the party. More pets for the party. Yeah, what was I at a nine? A nine I got spell focus conjuration. Spell pen, create a spell pen. Friends to animals, combat healer, safe curing. Revelation, revelation. Okay, so. Your revelation is going to be what? What What could it be? Enhanced cures, erosion touch, life leech, life link. Life sense. Nature's whispers, spirit boost. Spirit of nature. Enhanced cures, just you heal, you, you just heal more. It means you're, it means you're like your lower is worth a lot more, and your spell wise, you're doing level what, level level five spell. I don't know. It takes something. I don't know anything. Can you even have a angelic aspect cast on you? You can, in theory. Take raise dead. You haven't got raise dead. Um, level six spell. Dispel Greater Magic, and Communal True Seeing, you already have. <laughs> and it doesn't matter, you're not going to the party anywhere tiny time soon. Um, you can't cast that spell because it'll wreck you if you do. Is there an evil version of Eagle Soul? Blade barrier. Just summoning. How does increasing competition? I'm not entirely sure. This is a build I wrote down ages ago. It's kind of irrelevant because I'm not really going to use Darren uh, at all. It's just getting getting his level ups out the way. Savage. Not with this character. I mean, I definitely want to play a, a play a, a, a character that lets me have Regal, um, Darren, like, like basically have like full evil party and see how that works out for us. Wolgif, who I keep forgetting exists. Um, Mass Bull Strength, we already have that. Mass Eagle Splendor. Mass Endurance. 
Harm is a touch spell when you can create undead. Mass, mass inflict moderate wounds. I just realized that, that specifically sees living enemies. Okay, so it actually does have a. It heals friendly undead and damages enemy living enemies. Okay. Or is it for winners, Darren? <laughs> exactly. Level seven spells now. Which we already have like a bunch of them. Waves of ecstasy. Destruction. Just take destruction. It does do some damage. Thank you. And then your mythic today is going to be what? Um, mythic ability. Ascendant summons. Again, you're kind of summoning stuff anyway. I mean, I should, show, I should have given you create undead, shouldn't I? If you're doing all the summoning. Um, never mind. Again, it doesn't really matter. You're not joining the party. And then Wolgif. I've got stuff written down for you, I think. I do. Uh, this is your Eldritch Knight level 6. Level 7, sorry. Level 7 of Eldritch Knight. I'm just going to give you 1, 2, 3, 4 there. Then Feet is greater weapon focus on light blades. Then spell wise, whatever, doesn't make a difference. You get this level four spe level five spells. Uh level five spells. No, I see the ones. You want self buffs. Genie kind. Life bubble. I've never gotten this far in the game, so when I got Mythic Five, I'm just leveling up my team. I have no place for anyone. Oh, what looks good? Yeah, pretty much. For the people in my party, I, I, I made plans. For, for everyone else, not really. Thought Sense, Vampiric Shadow Shield. You can heal some damage done through the Communal Stone Skin, Shadow Evocation. Because you, you aren't a caster, so you want stuff that specifically levels you up. Give, like, benefits you. Like, echolocation? Not bad. What kind of self-buff can you get here? Angelic Aspect is a self-buff, I guess, too. It doesn't require you to be good, either. It just gives you a bunch of, a bunch of bonuses to your AC, your, your saves. Is it relevant? No, not really. Life bubble, no. Yeah, so thought sense, minute a level, gives you sixty foot blind sight. Echolocation, ten minutes level, gives you fifty foot blind sight. Weird. Um, other than that, they're exactly they're exactly the same spell. And do Camille some skin because no one else does it. Then your mythic is Archmage Armor as well. That one, is, that one did specifically write down for you because it's going to be crazy. It's going to give you plus nine to your AC. Um, and then last one is Camellia, who, because you used to be in my party, I do actually have a dedicated, uh, build page for you. Shaman Hunter 15. You're the character who had like, the least um, wiggle room. Um, critical focus. Because you're going... Why did I get critical focus? Why not crane wing right now? Ah, that's why we didn't have a shield. I kept wondering why does Camille not have a shield in my in my build because of Crane Wing. Get a plus four dodge bonus to AC with that. But again, you're not you're probably not going to come to my party anymore. You get you get level eight spells now. Your mass critical firestorm destruction animal shapes. 
Hey, Bosk. And then your mythical is improved abundant casting. Right, everyone's leveled up. Uh, where's everyone else then? Inside, I guess. Are they inside? Yeah. Yes, they are. Okay. Uh, Wolgif. Cool. Oh my god, I <laughs> even here I can sell stuff to you. Are you kidding me? I can sell stuff to you even here. Wolgif, are you my shop right now? <laughs> okay, that's fine. Good to know. I don't think Wilser Garms is here. Um, Sila? I will learn the way to my sword. I will have faith in the Inferitor. I am the first into battle and the last to leave it. Good reason to bring Vuljif. With her eyes half closed, Sila whispers the words for the oath of Iomedes' paladins. Trailing off, she opens her eyes and sighs. How did he end up here? I never would have imagined I'd find myself in the abyss. How are you holding up? I'm hanging in there. I don't feel good in this place. The air stinks like something died, and I'm having trouble sleeping. I keep waking up at night. I think I hear someone being tortured nearby, pleas and cries echoing towards me. So I wake up and listen, but there's nothing. I keep thinking about everything, praying every day that the soul's sunhammer abducted from the crusaders weren't brought here. The abyss will kill them or infect them, infect with its madness, even without the demon's help. Seeing this ocean of evil and injustice before me is tearing me apart, Lisa. So many innocents are held captive here, and a torrent of ruinous darkness flow from this wretched place into the other plains. My mind is tested to the limit every day I spend in the abyss. I am ready to help me hold on to it. But we've overcome everything we've faced so far. We'll get through this as well. That's right. Thank you, Chandra. I've always had faith in us, and I will keep having faith. But sometimes a girl needs a few words of encouragement. How are you? Elan's wedding things didn't go exactly as planned. What does it matter how I am? I can't stop thinking about everyone who suffered. Clever Sila, the paladin, companion of the god's chosen one, didn't even notice a demon conspiracy right under her nose. I'm going to officially change my name to Sila the Dimwit. That's how I'll introduce myself to everyone I meet, so that they know they can't count on me. Sila chuckles grimly, then adds in a softer, more serious tone. If we're too late to save the souls of all those victims, I will never forgive myself. You know what else I keep thinking about? What happened to Curl? Did he really want to steal the ring? Did he just get what was coming to him? Or was it the fault of the demon who possessed his body? So many questions and so much grief. As if a whole world wound and two demon lords out there just waiting to hurt us wasn't enough. Uh, Ember? 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 Uh, Jesus Christ. Ember! Oh, there you are. I thought, for a second, I thought she was under bismuth. Ember is bobbing her head and humming a tune. And I have nothing here. Okay. And nothing new for you. We can rest here. Our, our storage chest is here. I'm going to start selling old shit, because let's be honest, we don't need a bunch, a bunch of the old crap you can, don't even need anymore. Like, if you're less than plus three, you can just fucking go. Um, cold bites, plus two. Plus one. A comma, I'm never going to use a comma. Crossbow, no one's ever going to use a crossbow. Eye for an eye, composite plus three bow, maybe. Flaming star knife, no one's ever going to use that. Fortune's temper, no one's ever going to use that. It's an, it's an exalt, it's a martial weapon. I don't even think Wolgif can. Wolgif can use it, actually. The Light Blade. Wolgif can use Okay, well, on. Wolgif can actually think about using that. Grave Singer. Head Cracker. Stuff of Coercion. Retriever's Claw. There's, there's, too much, there's too much stuff to even think about here. Um, Are we dumping anything here? Banshee's Heart. Uh, Guardian's Battle Axe. Uh, Rock Ring Storm. Any interesting... Or I suppose I might think about giving people some ideas about rings and so forth. Uh, physical Flow plus Floor Belt. Um, those are... I don't think you know what? I, I can't even think about this stuff right now. Darren? Darren looks rather distracted. He is staring into space as though he's listening to something deep inside of himself. Finally, he notices you and his lips quirk into a nervous smile. So many people have cursed me and told me I'll end up in the abyss when I die. I suppose I've rather deftly subverted their expectations by getting here while I'm still alive. You don't like it here, do you? 
Can't you see that I'm afraid? More afraid than I've ever been my entire life? Theron asks in a grim voice. And believe me, I'm no stranger to paralyzing fear. We are in the most atrocious and macabre place imaginable. Moreover, we're practically surrounded by demons, curse them all. Vile, rotten creatures who can experience something approaching joy only when torturing mortals. You can't even imagine how glad I am to find myself in their domain. Mm. If anyone can get themselves out of this mess, it's us. You... You really seem to believe that. How astonishing. Well, at least I'm in following a fearless leader who seems immune to pangs of melancholy. Traversing the abyss of the miserable commander would have been utterly unbearable. Uh, Camellia? Yeah, fine. Socio? Socio is drawing something, but when he notices you, he hurriedly folds over the paper. Don't tell me you've managed to find some beauty in the abyss. No. Cringing a little, Socio shows you a few sheets of crossed out sketches, but you can still recognize the vistas of Aleutian era in them. I tried, but I can't. Not here. May the goddess forgive me, but it's beyond my powers. Struggling for inspiration? My drawing, it's just not flowing the way it normally does. This place doesn't inspire creativity. Cool, I think that's we've talked to everyone. Have a quick rest. Uh, let's do a... Let's do a resting here. Let's do a... Mold wine? No. It is mold wine, isn't it? It's mold. You can, you can do mold wine. Honestly, just do a, just a hearty meal. Just do a hearty meal right now. And craft me a potion of mage armor. Craft cash level 15. Do it. Even Asimars are no match for nethers, nethers when it comes to strength. You can produce beautiful, healthy offspring, but it is your one advantage over us. How about this for an advantage? I shall still be capable of doing the deed that produces offspring some twenty years after you have withered from decrepitude. Having an all evil party with like the amount of barbs flying between everybody will be amusing as all hell. A conversation with Greybore. Okay, so we'll go deal with that then. Uh Greybore was out I know Greybore was at the door. With Grace? Also, you. Smile goes a long way. Portions of mage armor. Take that. You have to use it when, when the time is correct. Graybor, hi. Graybor gives you a sly smile as he lights his pipe. The excited glint in his eyes betrays his impatience to share some news with you. Finally, he can contain himself no longer. Interesting news has reached my ears. How? We haven't gone anywhere. There has been talk among the more disreputable citizens of Illusionaire that someone is hiring the most vicious thugs and cutthroats to kill a certain Willodus. A familiar name, isn't it? I strongly suspect that this is the same Willodus who set me up during the assassination of Darazand. I'd call that a fortuitous coincidence. What you have against Willodus? Because he basically sets you up to, with a dagger that doesn't work. I can't wait to have a few words of that fellow. He contracted me to kill the Baylor Darazand and he insisted that I even use the magical dagger he gave me, which turned out to be defective. My target escaped, and even though it was only postponed his death for a few days, it sullied my reputation. This means, of course, that Willodus will have to pay. I'm not yet how, I'm not yet sure how I will collect that payment, in gold or his life. And how did you obtain this information? I am an assassin. If I didn't know how to obtain rumors, I'd be out of work. I visited a few taverns, including a place called Bad Luck. It's a real cesspool, and information flows into it from all over the city. I was approached by someone who was looking to hire for thugs for hire. He was the one who told me everything. I would have found out more if I had talked to him longer, but after he called me a bloody larva, he needed the dentist, and I needed a new mug of beer. And who is Velotis? Greybor takes a slow, thoughtful draw from his pipe, then answers in a business-like manner. Here's what I know about our prey. He is a demon, and a wizard powerful enough to enjoy high status in the city. Lately, he has surrounded himself with a small army of mercenaries, but they are mere thugs who lack the skills of professional bodyguards. Ever since Velotis found out about the bounty on his head, he hasn't left his mansion. I suspect it's full of traps. I wouldn't underestimate the danger of facing Willotus. They were looking for real daredevils to bring him down, which means this whole business is almost certainly risky, maybe even suicidal. But you can do this, 47. Greybor's just Hitman 47. And who wants Willotus dead? An anonymous entity who has apparently has more brains than Willotus, and is smart enough to keep his name a secret from his employees. I bet it is one of the Descarites. Darazan was one of the Descari's lackeys, after all, and even though internal strife never ends within that snake pit, they always team up against external threats. And what you suggest. I'll be damned if I let a bunch of incompetent thugs get to him before me. No. 
First, I must have a little chat with the Lotus, and then they can do whatever they want with him. How about we leave those hapless goons in the dust and visit Lotus's mansion first? That sounds like an exciting challenge, isn't it? How do we find Velotus? His mansion is in the upper city. It is called the House of the Wicked Knowledge. I'm not sure how wicked his knowledge is exactly, but he is truly wicked when it comes to business agreements. Do you want to kill Velotus? Not necessarily. Perhaps I'd rather have the full weight of my compensation in gold. And yet, the longer my vengeance is delayed, the stronger my desire grows to collect the debt in another way. All right, we'll pay Velotus a visit. Excellent. I think that conversation will involve some good old-fashioned violence. And I put a sweet in my mouth to save my throat. Okay, um... Told you. Let's just do some quick bulk selling of mundane shit. Paramarchy of Divine Guidance. Not a bad harm, Maki, you know, not gonna lie. Yeah, that's not bad either. There's a, large, there's a large amount of not badness here. Seasoned Assassin's Armor. The Crimson Banner. While this item is active, all critical hits made by you or against you are automatically confirmed. Ouch. 300,000. Master Fencer's Sword. Look how expensive that is. Acrobat's footwear lets you stand up without provoking an attack of opportunity. That's literally worth 444,000. How much damage are we party taking? Uh, hang on. Uh, full, I think. Uh, options. Um, full. Full damage. I have, I have weak crits on. And the enemies are slightly weaker than usual, but full damage. I mean, one good turn and we die. Let's go sell you a bunch of random crap as well. Um, also, well, Jeff, I appreciate that you're a shop, but why exactly do you have infinite money here? Of course, Master of Hope, Paul Jitska, Ryan Daggers, Master of Claves, Summation, Kama, Earthbreakers, Evercold. I want to keep an eye on these, because these might be useful for Wolgif. Great Axe plus one, Honorable Judgment, Cookery plus one, Breastplate plus two, Breastplate plus three, Chainmail two, King Shirt plus one, Full Plate plus two, Mithril Blessed Plate plus two, Chain Shirt, Ring, 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 Belt, 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 Boots of Stampede, maybe. Those can go. That can go. Muljif. So you're currently using the Shock Flaming Cross of Cold Iron Cookery plus three. And you're using the Blitz Cut. And you totally can use Fortune's Temper, which is a holy star knife. And you can use a flaming star knife as well. That look that looks baller, not gonna lie. That looks pretty damn cool. Go ahead. Yeah, it was a fire snake, not a fireball, but it was still horrific. It killed what one fire snake killed like ten halflings. That looks really war, actually. That looks pretty damn cool.
Yes, that's mental flow plus two. Oh, you can use a scimitar. You can use a scimitar for close range combat. How do you use them without stabbing yourself? Very good question. Because it's fine, because you seem you seem to your hands seem to clip through them with no problem, so. Plus four best rate, I'm not gonna beat that. Let's say wisdom plus two. Working you. Fine, that's fine, that's fine. That's. Uh -huh. hmm, I know. We rested. Let's get out of here. We've done more than enough at this point. Let's actually get out of here. Nanio's back to being Nanio again. Oh, this thing. Um, save and actually do this. I thought this was the way out. It's not. So what is this? It is something. Okay. You need special talismans coins to use Elishner's portal network. We do. We have um, portal network. We got... um. We had Barrett, we had, we had, we had, we had Darazan's one, don't we? Yeah, gold crown of Barazan's mark. I do have one. Dick. This is my time. Right, let's get out of here. Do this. Let's do this the proper way, apparently. So hang on, we do have... So we can summon Mastodons, Movanic Divas, and now an Azata Gale as well. The uses of Mode to Miraculous Magic. Bane we don't need. Good Hope is re relevant. Song of Broken Chains. Is that a, diff is that a different song? Are, are our songs getting replaced, or are they the same song? Don't remember now. Um, I hate to cut off. Really, I'm blocking that. That can leave. Right, party is correct. Let's go. Let's actually do the thing we're supposed to be doing here. Right. In the horse. Get on the boar. Get on the triceratops. No, then me is happy. I got my four Intel Nux set up. Nice. Look, another mortal. You can't swing a dead cat without hitting one of Lucianir's guests nowadays. Merchants, travelers, demologists, every kind of filth. I'm all done here. Long forgotten by mortals and demons alike, then hold you sigil of the perished demon lord Nahindri. Whoa, hello. To the port. Commoner, 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 commoner. 
We can go up in this map. Oh, let's, 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 um, let's explore this map for a bit. Yeah, what, what do people have to say in this place? You should never deal with that crazy bitch, Valexia. When she start, gets bored, she's doing horrible things. Not a freaking chance you're gonna get a fair shake from Shamira. She'll chew you up and spit you back out. You'll be right back here in the slums before you can blink. I'm telling you, if she wants something from you, go and find it and sell it to someone else for cheap cash. What a strange... This stranger, a lad from another plane, was wandering around here looking for cheap goods to buy. So he pitched him some hot merch and the guards nabbed him out of the gates. What a laugh. In the strange abyssal realm, space sometimes behaves in weird and unexpected ways. By turning the camera due so north, south, east, or west, you can change the city itself around you, opening new paths. Really? How does that work? Huh. Uh, loot that, please. The abyss is chaos, and everything is constantly changing in both appearance and nature. Even the architecture of the city is in constant motion. There was a thing I could loot over here, couldn't I? Oh god, is... Okay, hang on, let's go up here. Real briefly, then. This is gonna, this is gonna do my head in. This is gonna do my head in something fierce. So I must have missed you fight that uber shade-like dude. How difficult was it? I always locked two folks I had to resurrect. Um, first time he got us completely off guard. I think you mean the guy who's like in the bone pile, I think? Uh, so the first time he got us completely off guard, so he took down Chandra immediately. Second time around, he got distracted with by Ivu and things and like... The mounts, basically. So I took, started taking out the mounts. Um, so we managed to wipe out the other shadows, and then we could focus on him. And he has a high... I mean, the, the biggest problem with him was spell resistance, because even, like, Chandra had some problems getting past the spell resistance. But once she, she hits him, she could take down... She, could, she, could, she does, like, 400 damage a hit. Or, sorry, 200 damage a hit or something. And he's only got 600 HP, so it's gonna run. It's gonna run out eventually. Uma has it. You convinced Minagwa to betray Baphomet, and now she is plotting against her former allies. You're a cunning one, aren't you? Uh huh. Beggar. Anyone interesting here? Nope. It's a hang on. How do I get up here then? It's, it's to do with over there. It must be to do with over. There. I don't know. This is really doing my head in. I don't know what. I don't know where I'm supposed to be going or not. You can climb up to the rooftop there. Loot that over there. That is a book. Things to see in Illusion Era. The the Battle Bliss is a fabled combat arena. Famous fights between demonic duelists, free for alls, and slaughter of defenseless slaves. You can see it all. The Flesh Markets is a slave market. The Ten Thousand Delights is a is a basically massive brothel. I hate moving around the city. I'd grab some dimension doors to make it easier. <laughs> the harem. Do you dream of witnessing abyssal, abyssal political life? The harem is the civic center of Evolution Era and the place where Nocticula's closest associate, Lady Shamira, currently presides. Enjoy this facility magnificent architecture as well as exciting and fast-paced show trials. And Nocticula's palace. There is no question that the place for the Midnight Isles Sovereign is the number one spot for any interplanar wanderer. The structure's grandeur, elegance, and alluring grace and imposing monumental scale are absolutely awe-inspiring. Truly, only in the Abyss could these qualities have come together in a single architectural masterpiece. Alas, yours truly never got the chance to take a peek inside this gorgeous edifice. Will you, dear reader, perhaps have better luck? Despite the Lady Noctis orders that dissuade citizens from murderous excesses in public places, the streets of Evolution Era, particularly its dark alleys and seedy nooks and crannies, may present you with some unpleasant surprises. Given the possibility of these unfortunate developments, I would recommend having planar shifting spells prepared, or at least some means of teleporting to safety. Okay, uh... Guess evolutionary slave, commoner, commoner slave. No freaking chance you get a fair shake from Nashamira. A bunch of tentacles crept out of the crap drain and dragged away a couple of drifters. Those bums screamed like they were doing pieces when you laughed our heads off. How pleasant. Um, that is There's bad luck there. tavern. Is there? There's some loot over here. 
no challenge at all. Loot Jara. Whatever the, whoever that Jara is. Alright, let's figure this out, hang on. Let's go back to that count, because the, 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 the walls are bloody up. Alright, they're down now. Go. Uh -huh. Move. Get down here. Go across over there. It seems to be camera focused, so if you can play around with the camera. Yeah, okay, it's camera focused. Commoner, 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 beggar, 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 commoner, commoner, commoner. Uh, the Chandra? World is full of wonder. This is my time to shine. You so you feel the perception check, but someone hey, there you go. Have a look. A trap. Where? Is it trap? Where's the trap? The trap up there. Okay. Interesting. Oh, there's stuff over here to get looted too. Um. Easy. Demon blood. Nice. Counter. 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 So you can head over this way. Hello. A group of dirty beggars gathered in, in tattered clothes have gathered around a handsome young man with messy dark hair. The cloud is clearly hostile, but he doesn't seem to notice. He gives the beggars a charming smile, completely oblivious to the sharp shivs glinting in their hands. The young man has a glove puppet on his hand, a dragon made of rags with buttons for eyes. He raises it up and begins to ventriloquize in a surprisingly deep voice. Hey, you lousy parasites. Who's in charge here? The young man lowers his puppet and beams cheerfully. He addresses the crowd normally in a warm, friendly voice. I would like to invite your leader to a romantic dinner. With candles. I'll pay for everything, of course. A date with one of them? You must be really desperate. I think they're very sweet pe pe uh, per citizens. The beggars whisper among themselves. You manage to catch a few snippets of the conversation. He's crazy. Leave him be. What if he bites you? Before the crowd disperses, the young man jots something down in his notebook. Okay. Beggar, beggar. Ooh, uh, what dinged? What's a trap, huh? Bismuth spotted a trap. That's... That's a very easily access trap. Where? Where are all these traps you keep finding? Up like, on the roof stops, okay. Something over there. Huh? What's that? The flow of lava rushing through Lucianera to the ocean originates somewhere at the very top of the city. That's how gravity works, yes. Um, that is to the Batluck Tavern, in and out. There's someone over there, we can just walk over that way. There's a way up, is there a way up over here then? How doth how doth one get up to these places? Hmm. I'm trying to wonder, can you get over here, move the camera so that you go up, then go from there to there? But then there's Atlas lava there. I'm very confused. No time for idling. Oh, so there's, there's, there's someone actually marked with the name over here, so we'll just go this way. Shara and George's loot, and have a look over here. The Midnight Isles, the abyssal realm of Nocticula, can be found in Ishiar, the great ocean of the abyss. The sound of your footsteps startles the demon, and she gives you a baleful look. You have disturbed me, mortal. Why have you broken my solitude? One second thought, save your answers. Your reasons do not interest me. A boy of about twelve stands next to her. The boy examines his wrists, which are covered in strange round scars that look like they have come from suction cups. His inflamed skin, burning eyes, and general appearance suggest that demon blood runs through his veins. He lifts his gaze, giving you a long, sad look. Who are you? 
I am Zara the Grim, mortal worm, the most skillful explorer of the depths of Ishiar. I learned from Master Willardus himself, the trusted mage of Our Lady in Shadow. One day I will surpass my master's skill and take his place. Everyone knows this, including Willardus himself. So next time you dare to address me, do so with respect if you'd like your head to remain on your shoulders. And what are you doing? I'm listening to the ocean, and waiting for this worthless whelp to recover enough strength to plunge back into Ishiar's depths. What a shame I cannot walk his paths myself. How ironic that the most coveted mysteries are revealed to the most pitiful of creatures, mortals. Now who is this boy? Zorgis is my son, the best of my offspring. He is helpful and obedient, which is the only reason I condescend to take care of this wretched creature. You alright, kid? The boy flinches as you speak to him. He looks at you with amazement, perhaps even fear. Then his eyes dart to the demon. Mother, may I speak to her? The demon's voice holds suspicion and anger. Don't speak to the boy. What do you want with him? Are you plotting to steal him away? Be warned. If you lay a finger on him, you will regret it. And what are you doing to your son? Tell me the truth. Do you truly think I will answer you, worm? I grow ever more inclined to destroy you as well. Mother tells me to dive deep, to places where moonlight never reaches. Down there I... The boy stops, his words drowned out by the demon's angry hissing. Sorry, Mother, I won't say any more. Oh, Christ, I'm not going to go back to the champion voice. Um... Champion, could we allow this child to remain in the lands of this cruel creature? Normally, I would say we have no right to deprive a child of their parents' love. But these creatures do not know love. How could her mother be so cruel to her child? So what if he's my blood? That's not why I feed and protect him. Little Zorgis is valuable because his brothers and sisters died during my research. He is the only one who shows reliable, consistent results. She envies him. That's why she's so cruel to him. She wants to dive into these depths herself, but she cannot. Embers lowers her eyes sadly, paying no mind to the demon's indignant hiss. You can only experiment on others with, with consent. It's unprofessional to use underage children for this. This demon has violated the unspoken scientist's code and must be severely punished. I'm surprised, then, you. What would you want for yourselves, Orges? What would I want? In the depths, nobody knows this word, want. And I wasn't taught it on the surface, either. I know how to obey, dive, be quiet. But I don't know how to want. What can I want? Stop addressing my property, worm, or I'll pour the waters of Ishiar down your throat and let the ocean's tiny mollusks devour you from the inside and turn you into their shell. Hmm. What are we doing, folks? Clearly, both chaotic goods, chaotic choices and good choices are taking the kid away. From this heart from the mother. <laughs> like, clearly, good takes the, saves the kid. Lawful, it doesn't. Chaotic saves the kid. Evil doesn't. Green chaotic. Taking a child away from a bad mother is not a crime, but rather a good deed. Be gone. It's a good deed, but it doesn't count as good. It counts as chaotic. Interesting. This agrees with this. The demon looks you over, and the confidence in her eyes fades. She shrugs. You want to take the boy? I don't care. He's yours. I won't fight over a trifle like the length of some mortal spawn, especially since it's nearly exhausted its usefulness. Take him and do as you, do as you want with him. The boy you saved from his wicked mother gives you a look that is both sad and mature beyond his years. I sense a certain kindness, darkness, within this youth, hiding deep inside. Yet he himself is not evil. His soul is pure and kind, as a child's soul should be. So he should be able to see you. The boy is silent and focused, as if he too heard the voice of the hand, and he suddenly responds. Does this spirit speak the truth? Is there really darkness inside me? But how can I carry evil in me and not yet be evil? His gaze pierces you as if he wants to try to say something else, but reconsiders at the last moment. The boy, Ember gives the boy a broad smile. It's alright to be different. I'm different too. The commander has lots of odd friends. You want to be friends? He shrugs slightly. I think so. I don't know how, but I'll try. What do I need to do? We need... <laughs> Christ. 
do not show him Nenio's list. For the love of God, do not show him Lenio's list. Lenio's list of what constitutes a friendship. Because... Christ. <laughs> Friends smell at each other. They gossip. They drink together. They argue, and then they sometimes copulate. No! 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 Fucking no! Do not show the list. <laughs> then you step away from the boy and keep walking backwards. Nothing. We are now friends. You don't have to do anything to be friends. You just want to have to be friends. Can you see and hear the hand of the inheritor? Yes. He glows and he is not evil. I think I like him. But I feel there's an irre irrecon irreconcilable conflict between us. It is unfortunate. So this child can hear and see me. He is not evil, nor is he a sorcerer, a mage, or a wizard. He wields no spells that could reveal the unseen and carries no such spells cast by someone else. He just sees. What powers does this use possess? You yourself said that if people that aren't demons and are not governed by... People that don't have an evil heart can see you. You just told me he's not evil. That's why he can see you. Idiot. You know exactly why he can see you. You told me the limitations of your spell already. <laughs> so who are you? My mother named me Zorgis. I am a creature of her making, and until recently I was a creature in her every way. I was her creature in every way. I had many brothers and sisters, but none survived her research. So I was the only one left. Now that my mother is gone, I don't know who I am. Am I Zorgis? But that name means nothing. It was whispered into my mother's ear by Ishiar. So who am I? Tell me about your mother. Her name is Zara the Grim. She used to be a pauper, a diver who collected what Ishiar had taken. The ocean has no floor, so she recovered whatever hadn't sunk too deep. But those bounties were as generous as Ishiar is harsh. No one knows the ocean as well as she did. She knows the safe passages and she guides ships, swimming at half speed so they don't fall behind. She is a child of Ishiar. She was cremated in it. Her first cry burst from her lips the moment she broke the surface. But many centuries have passed since her incarnation. She is dark, like Ishiar. Cruel, like Ishiar. Powerful and uncompromising, like Ishiar. Fertile and merciless towards her children, like Ishiar. And what experiments did she perform on you? I am too young, and I don't know enough to judge them. We'd go to the shore, to Ishiar. She'd feed me potions, then force me to dive deeper and deeper each time. By the time I was eight, I could dive so deep the water pressed on me from all sides, and my bondy no longer wanted to ascend. I had to stay there as long as I could. Then I'd come up, my nose bleeding, and sometimes my mouth and ears as well, even my eyes. The next day, Mother would make me drink a different potion, then send me down again. It was so dark down there. I could feel the touches of strange, dark things. Sometimes their vibrations reached me as if they were communicating with me. On those days, I vomited black slime. I tried to hear their voices, but I never had enough time. Mother would be furious, beat me, brew a new potion, then make me dive deeper, stay longer. Last time, I spent seven hours in the water. There were so many vibrations they enveloped me. Then I realized I'm neither food nor an enemy, though I have the blood of the enemy in my veins. What does it mean? I don't understand. It was a little boring, so I imagine I was a giant octopus floating in the deep waiting for prey. I'm afraid no one else will tell you more about me because you angered my mother, and she is vindictive. A remarkable discovery. A pity I cannot include it in my encyclopedia, as your mother obtained this knowledge in violation of professional ethics. I recommend that you visit any research institute in Absalom and demand a lifelong compensation in exchange for this information. Send me a letter if you want me to vouch for you. So what are we going to do with you now? I'd rather not go home, and I have nowhere else to go. What do they do, those who have nowhere to go? I don't know. Maybe I should live in Ishiar. Champion, we have no Our special here, agents have gained information about something that could change the history of humanity. Whoa. Hey, Herflex, thank you for the resub. Much appreciated. Nice. He needs care, and fate has entrusted you with this child. I have faith that you will make the right choice. Oh, well, you can go to the Nexus. You'll find refuge on my camp if you so choose. Thank you for not deciding for me, but granting me the right to choose. Others have not done this, and so I'll accept your invitation. Woo. Woo. The little one is now safe in our care. Neither his cruel mother nor a remorseless kidnapper will cause him further harm. I am glad we share a belief that children should not be victims of such evil. I am certain that Georges will be better off on Galarian. Kid can clearly teleport, though. Kid can clearly teleport, though. 
Right. I guess the only we can go to the port and we can go to the bad luck tavern. That seems to be the limitation. That seems to be the limits of our abilities at the moment. Friendship lasts forever. I wonder what defines intelligent demons. I think, I think it's like that was a half, uh, not a, that wasn't a full demon child. I think they said they said it was mortal. He was mortal, so I'm assuming it's like a half demon. Right, we are in the Bad Luck Tavern. Oh, people with people with names. Please be careful. Okay, start looking around here. Adventures are exciting. Red mask. Most of the book's pages have been torn out. Only remainder of this top one is going. Receipt for brew, three barrels. Absinthe, three barrels. Three bottles. The broth drained from the baths and the 10,000 delights, two buckets. Meat from the Her from the Hrezo stock, four sacks. Roots, two sacks. Stan stices, half a bucket. Payments. Beer from Material Plane, six barrels. Should order more. It tastes like piss, but the guests from Material Plane drink it like there's no tomorrow. Last year's beef, three sacks. You can get rid of the smell with garlic and mustard. Vegetable from Grum Store, three sacks. Make him either drop the price or water his patches with different filth. His clients are unhappy seeing a blue carrot in their soup. Sean spices, one bucket. I need to rip the chef's head off for using so much of it. It's not salt, for fuck's sake. Rotten cheese, two buckets. Was a big hit with the locals. Should order more. Need to ask them to add more maggots next time. Bees ores and stuff like that. Okay, and there's a loot over there. Right, let's, so we have what? We have people with names here. We have Red, we have the Portal, we have Burgaz, we have Melara, we have Slave, we have Red Mask, Commoner, Commoner, Commoner. And stuff to loot. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go looting. Let's go looting all by ourselves. We have, the, we have the best perception and the best trickery, so. The, the trap is that the deactivation is the deactivation thing. Easy. Ooh, a ring. Prismatic ring. This ring allows, allows casting an improved version of Prismatic Spay once per day as a 17th level wizard. The wearer can recharge this ring by consuming spells for which the sum of the levels must be equivalent to at least 9. Interesting. Intriguing. Would you cast this? I think maybe you use that one? Possibly. You have your prismatic spray. Improved prismatic spray. Um a right. simple smile goes a long way. Some mid midnight morals. Loot the chest that had that had a trap that no section. Some cold iron. Huh? Outside. Okay, this is this the outside area. Outside up top, however. Okay, interesting. We can go. Oh, yeah. There's a, there's a loot hole there. Okay. Got everything, got everything. Go outside there, go outside here. Let's go talk to the people here. Let's go talk to Red Mask, because you seem to be far away from everything else. Get lost and looking for drinking campaign. Okay, you're not really a person then. You are not really a person. Right. Mielara. Mielara. Greeting you with a nod is a middle-aged sorceress with short dark hair, a skinny face, and a prominent cheekbones that bring to mind images of predatory birds. Despite the dark circles under her eyes and overall worn-out look, her voice sounds friendly and welcoming. Hey, you're not local, are you? Have you come from Galarian? That makes us fellow countrymen, and I hail, since I hail from Absalom. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Magister Milara, 
a certified specialist in resolving magic-related issues, and a captain of an airship called Starcatcher the Third. Attack! What's a sorceress from Absalom doing in this rat hole in the middle of the abyss? For a couple of seconds, the woman gaze goes distant, and a bitter expression appears on her face before quickly fading. I suppose you could say I'm trying to cheat my own fate. In the current state of my life, the abyss seems like the best port of call for, to call home for me. There aren't a lot of experienced and, at the same time, trustworthy captains around here, so I never sit idle. You seem honest. How do you manage to survive in this place? For only a little, Hilara crosses her arms in a resolute gesture. I see what you're getting at. You're asking how a captain who doesn't grab everything that isn't bolted down, a captain that doesn't steal cargo and doesn't throw passengers overboard, how can they survive surrounded by a gang of bloodthirsty pirates? My answer is simple. My principles protect me. Why is the city on fire? Because the city's in the abyss. We are currently in the abyss. This is a Lucian era. I strictly follow the unwritten Ar Aeronaut Code. I never ignore those in distress, I never attack other vessels, and I honor the integrity of the cargo that I am trusted with. Maybe I look like an idiot to the other captains, but I don't care. My doggedness earns their respect, even if it also provokes their ire. Besides, they know that I am stubborn, and I'll defend myself to the very end. I suppose that's the real reason why they haven't slit my throat and seized my ship yet. I'd like to know more about you and your ship. I can understand your curiosity. You won't find another ship in, like the Starcatcher the Third in the Abyss. Actually, captains like me are a rarity here as well, for obvious reasons. Tell me about your ship. Starcatcher the Third, as you can guess by her name, is not the first ship I have captained. But she is, without a doubt, the most technologically advanced, and she has been through the most amazing adventures. She is the most reliable and neat vessel you can find in the Midnight Isles. She and I, we have been through serious hardship more than once, but my ship has never failed me. Once Starcatcher the Third made even made a short raid to the Rift of Repose, the place where the souls of murdered demon lords slowly disintegrate, imprisoned inside crumbling stone sculptures. Plus, I should also note that Starcatcher the Third has a unique reputation in these parts. She has never participated in pirate raids, never transported most smuggled Gojo slaves, never passed by other vehicles in distress without providing help, and never been in the service of any of the demon lords. I can't think of any other ship in the Midnight Isles that enjoys such a good and honest reputation. Mielora utters the last words with pride, as if she were talking about a living creature instead of an airship. So there was a first and a second? A cheerful smile the source fades away. Starcatcher the second crashed on the rocks of Alithin Alinth Alinthia. Alinithia. Alinithia. We were sailing over Murrah Island when a mutiny broke out. It's an evil place where discord and hostility fill the air like obnoxious miasma. A part of the crew tried to seize the ship, the others remained loyal to me, and a massacre ensued. Defending myself, I had to fight my friends until I was the last one standing, the last survivor. All by myself, I barely managed to guide my ship to Alinthia, Alinithia. But when I was bringing her into land, the rocks tore into her like a fishmonger gutting a fish. Starcatcher the second was irreparably damaged. As for me, I escaped with a couple of bruises and a shipped tooth. The sorceress squeezed out a bit of smell. As for Starcatcher the first, it was because of her that I decided to settle in the abyss. How did you wind up in the abyss? Her face becomes grim, her words seem to come from somewhere cold and remote, as if from the grave. I was once a member of the Arcana Miriam. Arcana Miriam. Most prestigious magic academy in Absalom. Reloaded! Hello! Welcome, brother! How you doing, mate? You doing alright? <sighs> Quick drink. <clears throat> the most prestigious magic academy in Absalom. Chilling till DM time for Fallout. Nice. How's that going for you? Back then I was a captain too, and I delivered special cargo and passengers at my colleague's request. I had been assigned to a risky and extremely important rescue mission on the plain of Abaddon. I had to rescue a group of pathfinders who had gotten into hot water there. I literally ripped them out of the claws of the gravedigger, held of Xyphus, got of accidental and pointless death. I don't want to DM anymore. Oh no! <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. No. Oh. And that son of a bitch never forgave me for that show of disrespect. He put a curse on me. People around me started dying. Both those I cared about and those I never even heard of. These of horrible, pointless, and tragic accidents that cut lives unnaturally short followed me wherever I went. But nothing happened to me. I managed to get out of trouble, any trouble, without a scratch. And even when violence raged all around, I tried to get rid of my curse, but no one could lift it. Soon after that, Starcatcher the First was wrecked in a terrible storm. Then I decided to go into voluntary exile and stay away from the plains where civility, mercy, and common sense are valued. 
Here in the Abyss, I can at least avoid mourning those whose lives are cut short due to my curse. Besides, the Abyss is insane and bloody enough even without me, so that my cruel fate can add very little to this crazy whirlwind of aggression. Who works on your ship? I handpick my crews personally and extremely meticulously. I try to recruit those who are not completely corrupted by the prevailing customs of this place, let's put it that way. Even here, there's a chance, a rare one, but still a chance, to meet a mortal with a good heart. Someone who, though poisoned by this malicious environment, is not yet beyond redemption. I do my best to help these people. If I'm successful, I give them enough gold so they re relocate to some other plane, then I send them on their way. Being at the end kind of sucks. Always kind of sucks. I don't really plan anything, so I've learned it doesn't doesn't really work. Yeah. I want to do this. Players, I want to go that way. Play, doing the actual, like, proper um, Elder Scrolls slash Fallout thing of, like, you're spawning in the world, you see where you have to go, do a complete 180 and start walking. <laughs> I hope that this way, I'll be able to save at least some decent souls. Alas, in this case, failures come much more often than successes, so to protect my good-hearted but corrupted crew from making irreversible mistakes, I have to rely on some spells. With a smile, Yelara taps her finger against her temple. I call it Disciplinary Thought Correction. Okay, cool. Fair winds to you too. If you find yourself in need of an excellent airship and a skillful captain, just let me know. Cool. If I need you, you're there. A wrinkled demon with broken fangs and a missing eye stands before you. The eye socket is occupied by a large, squirming, multi-legged insect. Yet it seems not to cause the demon any discomfort. He greets you with a venom in his tone. Welcome to the bad luck. I am Burgaz, the innkeeper. Our establishment holds a high standard of service in that it's better to eat and drink here instead of a ditch. Sleep here at your own risk, drown the rest of your life in sheep's will, or purchase goods of the highest quality and of dubious origin. Upon giving your entourage an appraising look, the demon adds in a silken voice, we accept payment in gold and slaves. What about dragon bites? If you accept those, I'll show you payment, you big meanie. Dirty floor, terrible booze, a clientele of scoundrels, each one more dreadful than the last, and an innkeeper who is a crook and probably a creep. Ha, <laughs> the perfect venue to celebrate our arrival in this godforsaken place. Who wants to me to keep company? Who wants to keep me company and even entertain the other patrons with a few crusader songs? I doubt they'd heard them before. I am not the commander. I was demoted, goddammit. I guess they don't know that, but I'm not the commander anymore. Uh, oh, you can sell stuff, okay. Where can I find Nocticula? The demon goggles and then bursts into deafening laughter. Tiny bugs, tiny bugs find out of his maw. Wiping away bloody tears and giggling, he grabs a particularly nibble insect and tosses it back down his gullet. You can find her in the palace, mortal. Thing is, she won't just see anyone. The last person who had the nerve to show up uninvited now lives in the catacombs, and everyone calls him Scrap. Care to guess why? I don't know who you think you are, but you will not be allowed to, on her doorstep unless she invites you herself. And to receive an invitation from Articula, you've got to be an influential and renowned figure in the Lucian era. Or you can do something to piss her off. Sometimes those two things are one of the same. And how do I get an invitation? Your chances are slim. But you look cocky, so you can try the gladiator fights in Battle Bliss. Everybody loves a good butcher. The dirtier and bloodier you fight, the more respect you'll earn. Only fools fight fair, so you must prove you know the ways of the fastest craft. The crowd will love you if you torment the loser before finishing them off. Make them shriek, squeal, and beg for death. And then you can count on having a fight of your life. You will face a Lehindrian League champion. Your death will be a symphony of suffering the audience will forever remember. What's going to be dream of such a fate? You can cozy up to someone in the upper city. The more influential your patron, the more respect you will be shown. Just remember that in Illusion Era, only the most skillful predators make it to the top, like Lady Valexia. More often than not, her offer of friendship is an introduction to their intrigues, and they will get into your head, twist your thoughts, and make you hate yourself, and make you destroy everything you ever loved with your own hands. That's their idea of fun. If you know how to, shall we say, solve problems, you could try to get under Shamira's wing. She presides over the harem of ardent dreams in the middle of the city, and rules Lushnira. Lady Nocticula does not stoop to such trifles herself. Commanding this city is dirty, bloody work, and Shamira is always in need of capable assistance, especially since she changes them as soon as she starts, they start to reek of her dark deeds. Walk through the slums. Everyone you will see there tried to climb higher but fell into a trap. There are plenty of warnings in their incoherent ramblings. So what are the latest rumors? No problem. Have a drink and we'll talk. 500 gold. That's literally pittance. The demon observes your face with obvious interests. The liquor stings and fills your mouth with the foul taste of salt and rotten fish. What do you want to know? Have you heard of anyone named Relotus? Of course, that's the name of the demon who serves as, shall we say, Octiculus Court Mage. The name has come up a few times recently because... The innkeeper's voice drops to a low, conspiratorial tone. They say Discari's servants sent assassins after him. 
he rubbed the locusts the wrong way, and now he's holed up in his palace, which he's turned into a fortress. How many folks from Galarian are here? Quite a few, but most of them spare, wear special accessories. The demon draws an imaginary circle around his neck. They're slaves, is what I mean. Or meat, sometimes. We do get some free ones from time to time. Scum, as a rule. The only type who can survive amongst demons. Eh, you humans can survive anywhere. Even in the cauldron of madness that is a Lucianera. Just like cockroaches, huh? What about Lucianera itself? In short, there's no order in this city. There never has been and there never will be. There are no laws here, as we demons spit on laws. The only law here is might makes right. There are no laws here, the only law here. There are no laws here, the only law here. Do you see? People don't... There are no laws here. I only have one law. I have no rules. I have one rule. I have no fear. I have one fear. Take everything you can and give away anything you can protect. Obey those stronger than you and maybe they'll devour someone else. Everyone does what they... Everyone does what Nocticula says. She split Illusionary into three quarters. The lower city, the middle city, and the upper city. The elites live comfortable lives above, the fools and losers rot below, and everyone else sits in the middle and dreams of climbing up, though they mostly fall. Each quarter is walled up so no one goes where they shouldn't. Guards watch the gates. I am always correct. In one, I am always correct. Two, if not the case is not correct, automatically apply one. <laughs> Although in truth, the guards are just a bunch of the most vicious and violent demons who carry out Nocticulous commands. If someone cuts you down in front of them, they won't interfere unless she orders them to. Then again, if you decide to bash someone's head in, they won't concern themselves with it. The only reason they might chase you away is if they want to loot the corpse themselves. The important thing is, don't kill anyone in front of a crowd and don't bother the guests from other planes. Octicular has her reasons. She's trying to turn Illusionera into the inter interplanar bazaar of the Abyss. And as you walk around Illusionera, keep track of the time. Not in the tiresome don't waste your time sense. Watch the time as if you were in a jungle and a predator was lurking in the brush. It might pounce on you and freeze you in place, stealing days, months, even years. You wouldn't notice any changes, and everyone around you would grow old and forget about you. In the Abyss, time is a fickle and unruly thing. What about this quarter? The demon points to a bottle of liquor. Imagine the Lucianera is this bottle. The lower city is the bottom. The explanation is quite apt, as the bottom of the bottle is coated with foul-looking scum and a dead insect with two fanged mouths is stuck to it. A cesspit. If someone or something needs to be eliminated, they send it to the lower city. They say the arena is the heart of the quarter, but that's nonsense. This whole quarter is one massive arena. Everyone here is a murderer, a thief, and a scumbag. The bloodshed never ceases, and the denizens of Lunashinera watch it with delight and wager on who will emerge from this lake of blood. You may think the sums is a loose appendage, but they are the main source of entertainment for the city. We've also got ports of sorts. But the truth is, sailors around here dock wherever they please. There's a whole load of small piers along the lower city embankment, different dealings running out of each one. For instance, a ship made of bones started mooring there not long ago. Words has it the helmsman looking for a crew to go hunt treasure. Should drop by if that interests you. Just look for the strange markings on the wall by the entrance. That's, that'll be the carrying on the DLC then. That'll be a way to carry on with the DLC in Act 4. Tell me about the other quarters of the city. The middle city is all about trade. The 10,000 delights offer sex. The flesh markets deal in slaves and weapons. The mercenaries and assassins steal the deal of the enemies. The most successful business person of all is Shamira at the harem of ardent dreams. Her merchandise is an articulous favor and the favor of the powers that be. The upper city is for those who have already have everything, and have no use for trade. Imagine if you were a creature of divine power that could live in complete comfort, free of almost all limits. That's the kind of who live in the upper city. You'd be wise to stay away from them. In the lower city, they'll just kill you and defile your corpse. In the upper city, they'll pull your soul out through your nostrils with a red hot needle, cook it into a stew, then force you to eat it and wash it down with a cocktail made from your eyes and marrow. Show me your wares. One last thing, mortal. You must have noticed that Lucianera is not made was not built for your kind. It would be easy for you to get lost on our streets and die an inglorious death. If you don't know how to fly or teleport, but why should I want you to die while you're still drinking? Take this. If you lose your way, take it to any arch and it will transport you here. Octicular's idea. To aid guests from other planes such as yourself. Oh. I understand now. You need to have a place. To, you have to, the coins tell you where to go. Darazan's coin will take me back to the Nexus. I assume. Before we talk business, can you have a glass of something to celebrate being not dead? Innkeeper, bring out your strongest stuff. You're looking at Galarian's finest crusaders, and we're here to drink. If you want my strongest to pay up front, and pay for the beds while you're at it, because you won't be walking out of here on your own. That'll be 2,000 gold. Pour. Tankards of bubbling liquid appear in your and Wenduag's hands. The drink smells of tar and soot. Wenduag looks around, her eyes burning with curiosity. 
Yeah, we've come a long way from home. But I like the madness of this place. Maybe we'll kill someone today, right here in the inn, you and me. Meeting your gaze, Wendua gives you a teasing wink. So, what will we drink to? Hmm. Someone said drink, yes. Since we're celebrating, I say we place a small wager to see who, which one of us can outdrink the other. A challenge? I love a good challenge, but I'm warning you, this will be the toughest fight of your life. With a sly wink, Wendwag throws her head back with joyful laughter. I'm still waiting for your toast. Hmm. Let's drink to the fun and the adventure that awaits us. Oh yes, my instincts tell me that an exciting mission awaits us. Or did you save? Oh god. Success and a fortitude check. Okay, so my fortitude checks are 23. Good. Whew. The poison brought to you by the innkeeper tastes as awful as it smells. However, the impressive potency promised was clearly no lie. Your vision blurs slightly and your heart beats faster, causing blood to rush through your body, filling it with heat. Ugh. What a delicious abomination. I swear it's even worse than that liquor made from venomous spiders, but I like it. Wendog's voice is softer than usual, relaxed. It's just like everything here. Disgusting, but strong. That's what tempts me about Lucianera. What about you? Hmm. Honestly, I like it here too. You know why? Because we're alike. Dark hearts, evil souls, that's us. Wendwag leans in and repeats with a smile. We are very much alike. We're not so different, you and I. The tankard is raised for new toast. Let's drink to the two of us being alike, to the evil beasts howling in our souls. The uplanders will always know us we're different. They are cattle, we are predators. That's why we need to stick to the pack and never trust strangers. DC 22. Still physically impossible for this. Your face goes numb and the world around you begins to rotate slowly as if it seeks to whirl you off into some strange dance. Oof. Wendwag stops drinking for a moment and some of her drink spills into the sticky floor. The Huntress's movements retain their grace but become less coordinated. After struggling to push some air down her alcohol-scorched throat, she ardently declares, Speaking of strangers, Galfrey's a real bitch. She sensed you were stealing her Grawly and would soon take her kingdom, so she got rid of you. She thought you'd die here. Fat bloody chance. We'll go back and get what's ours. Not bad, mistress, but you'll never outdrink me. With a fit of drunken laughter and a wag of her finger, Wendog makes her fist first somewhat indecisive attempt to collapse at your feet. Mm. You really are upset with you really are upset with her. Wendog gives you a fierce, defiant look. You're damn right I'm upset. On your account, by the way. Well and mine, it goes without saying. I also shed blood in those battles and as we sit here. Galfrey's tossing her triumph into the latrine. So why are you angry at Galfrey? Because I despise people like her. Those who don't hunt, yet walk around in the warmest furs. If a leader senses their authority is threatened, they take up arms and challenge the contender. But to merely send you as far away as possible, that is weakness. And I spit on the weak. The Queen's actions are understandable, I think. Let someone else understand them. As for me, I say we stick a knife into that bitch's gut as soon as we get back. Let's drink to the glory that awaits us once we scattered her guts on the floor. Twenty-six. I rolled exactly what I needed. Holy hell, Nemo Luck, you're really, really pushing it today. After another sip, you finally feel really good. The cozy interior of the inn invites you to stay here forever among its patrons, who may have their quirks, but are still charming in their own eccentric ways. You find yourself thinking the floor looks exceptionally soft, comfortable, and would no doubt be the perfect place for a nap. The warrior's speech is now quite slurred, and her voice is soft, heartfelt, and surprisingly friendly. You know what? Screw them all. Let's stay here. What do we need those uplanders for anyway? All their stupid rules, orders, their cautious chatter behind our backs. We'll conquer a kingdom here, you'll rue it, and I'll be your warlord. We'll fight for ourselves instead of that nonsense like loyalty, duty, and love. It's all garbage, especially love, am I right? 
Um, and scroll out how to both of them themselves. Of course, they're fiction. What else to die for? Like these fictions, golden power and a hearty meal. That's also nonsense. It may be foolish to die for love, but there's no shame or regret in it. Ooh. Hmm. It's a nice big long thing. I kind of want to ask one as well, kind of hoping that one doesn't end the conversation. Do I want to become famous? No, I don't. Fuck off. Mods! Give me your mod powers! Off with their heads. Thank you, Mort. Mm. How did you become so cynical? Huntress opens her mouth to snarl, but falls silent and occasion and shrugs sadly. And then says, I don't know. I'm not the one who made life this way. One great big cave where everybody eats everybody. Of course they're fiction. What are all else to die for if not these fictions? Gold power and a hearty meal? That's nah, also nonsense. It may be foolish to die for love, but there's no shame or regret in it. Nah, I'd rather not die at all. Dying in the name of things is, is the Uplander's game, but I want to live. When dog forces out to laugh, but you still catch the doubt that appeared in the eyes of after your words. Looks like you outdrank me after all. Well, be proud, that's a first. Like a good first time, I'm going to find it hard to walk afterwards. Looking at you helplessly, Wendor goes limp and begins to slide to the floor. It's time for this cat to take a nap somewhere warm. Can I hold on to you? Looks like the floor is about to jump up and hit me. The huntress's claws clutch at your clothes and she hangs on to you. She presses her head against your chest, closes her eyes, and when her mind is already somewhere else, whispers sleepily, You'll take care of me, won't you? Can I keep you? <laughs> Where's my menu? Oh right, it's a vertical sliding bar. Time passed eight hours. Time passed eight hours, but the buffs haven't gone down in any way, shape, or form. Interesting. Party Mule's still active for a long time. Some buffs have gone and some haven't. Weird. One way to check is just to go back to this. We, yeah, we did the, we did the, we did the, we did the, the pre-buffing. So we, we, we spit 15. Yeah, because all the buffs are still active. All the buffs are still active. The time didn't really pass at all. Okay, that's fine. Okay, let's go up. No, not not everybody, not just you. Um. But yeah, so that's that's more progress with with. Uh, with Wendu, I think. That's Wendu showing, showing vulnerability there. It's kind of nice. Oh shit, hi! Um. Together we stand. Yes? I don't know exactly why I still have her on the back. Never mind. Um. I don't know why exactly how I got. Hello. Senior guards, 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 guards. So these are guards. Do I know what you are? What are you? No, no, no. They're not actually creatures I can fight. Hello, senior guard. Rumor has it that you convinced Minago to betray Baphomet, and now she's plotting against her former allies. You're a cunning one, aren't you? Who do you think I am? The demon gives you an appraising look. Nobody. You may have been a big deal in your world, but this is the abyss. If I haven't heard of you, then you're not famous enough to be of note. And if you keep bothering me, you will become my lunch. Human meat never gets old, you know. No matter how many centuries you've been eating it. I want to go through. The demon sucks his teeth and replies, his voice tinged with laziness. No can do. This quarter is where decent people live. When they want to dismember someone, they can go down to the lower city. We're standing here so they won't be bothered by riffraff that wants to dismember them. Believe me, you don't want to go there. The slave traders have magic collars that fasten themselves around the necks of chances such as yourself and drag them straight to the cages. I could quite easily intimidate my way through this. But not right now. That's not sequence break, this I think. This is my time to shine. Ouch! Alright guys, I get it. It won't happen again. Just not my eyes, not my eyes. Move your hand, scum, says the Calavacus, or we'll break the other one too. I said move it. A group of demons laughing with glee is kicking a skinny babao curled up on the ground. Not your eyes? Fine. Then your belly. Have some of this. 
Oh wow, Ember's Ember plot now. What are you doing? You're hurting him. Ember dashes toward the demon laid out on the ground, shielding him from the blows. Stop! Why are you doing this to him? Huh? Who's that? The demons goggle at the girl. I'm... I'm just a mortal, weak and silly. Compared to you, I'm a mayfly. One moment I'm here, the next I'm gone. But you better listen to what I tell you, because I've lived more than you have. Ember, you're only 100 years old. By demon standards, you were born yesterday. How could you have lived longer than they have? If it is true, I'm not lying. It's quite easy to prove. The demons draw close to the girl and look her over with contempt. What's with all the riddles? What do you mean you've lived more than us? It's very simple. I haven't lived very long, but I have friends. Those I can protect. Those who are glad to see me. There are many sad things, but I still know what happiness is. But you? Eating, biting, fearing, hating each other? Are you really happy? And if you aren't, is this any kind of life? So yeah, I've lived a lot, but you spent centuries and centuries without really living. Bah! This mortal bat, this lump of meat is going to preach to us. The demon gives a predatory sniff, bends down, and shows off his mouth filled with sharp teeth. You know what makes me happy? Gobbling up tasty pieces of meat like you. Ember looks at him serenely. She reaches out and strokes his horned head with her burned palm. Poor thing. You are so hurt and scared all the time. You'll feel a bit better for a while when you torture others and forget about your own suffering. But is that really happiness? The demon recalls from her touch. There's a combination of surprise and terror in his fearsome face. Are you crazy or something? The demons stand around Ember. Their faces show caution and rapacious interest. It is clear that they are slightly afraid of the strange girl who shows no fear, but at the same time they see no obvious threat. <laughs> Ember's awesome. <laughs> yeah, Ember, this demon is wounded. Goods are well, all well and good, but let's help him. Oh, you're right. How embarrassing. There. Ember whispers a spell and the demon's wounds heal. Babao jumps up and runs away from Ember and the demons who are beating him. Screw you! I owe you nothing! Of course you don't. Ember smiles serenely. I help you for no reason, just because I wanted to. I hope you'll be all right. Ha! For no reason? You're stupid. No one does anything without a reason. She's a witch. Probably wants to sell us something. Some magic potions or herbs. Come on, show us. What do you have? What? No, I'm not selling anything. I just wanted to tell you how much you're missing. I mean, you're free. Freer than anyone in the world. But you use this freedom to make life miserable for yourself and everyone else. Just think how much happier you could be. Ember keeps preaching. The demons listen, occasionally interrupting with laughter and obscene jokes. Finally, they grow bored and walk away. They left. Do you think they understood anything? <laughs> if anyone in the world can convince a demon to repent, it's you. Thank you. But it's not about me. There's kindness in every creature, even in demons. They just had forgot about it for some reason. You know, I was thinking. I tried sending prayers to the demon lords, and I tried talking to demons in the street. But one of the demon lords lived right here in the city. Not particular, right? What if I try and talk to her? Not through pair, but in person. You're going to meet her sooner or later, aren't you? Please take me with you. I'm sure if you meet face to face, like you and I are talking right now, I'll be able to convince her to stop being so mean. You'll take me to, to her, right? <laughs> Ember wants to talk to Noctilla. <sighs> oh wow. Okay. Art of making friends. So you can audit the art, harm of art of dreams. Find someone who can arrange a fight in the arena, and visit Valexia's mansion in the upper city. And also, we can go to the we can go to the the, the port and carry on the DLC there. Oh my god, Ember, you are so awesome. Ember is just too... Ember is, just, Ember is too pure for this world and she is amazing. I'm rather proud of this one. Well done, Sos. The symbols inscribed in the wall belong to the language of the Titans, the first creations of the gods, and the selves, the creators of the sinister Demodens. Climb to the rooftop. Athletics 32. Uh, let's get your athletics... Oh, we're up here now. Aha. Looks like these rooftops can be used to bypass the guards to get to the streets above. Ah ha ha ha. They can bypass the guards entirely. Interesting. Easy. Ooh, uh, Librarian's Cloak. This cloak grants its wearer a plus 10 competence bonus on UMD skill checks. Also increases the effective cash level by 4 when using scrolls. What is your current? Cloak of Cleansing. Honestly? 
It means you're going to be so ridiculously useful. Hang on. Uh, UMD stuff, right? That's the UMD there. Plus five competence. Plus ten competence. It actually outstacks that. And plus five competence. We have a lot of competence bonuses to UMD checks right now. Um, but that's okay. I'll make use of that. Um, ranged touch attack rolls. It would be ideal for you, but you literally cannot remove your spells. You need Red Salamander to cast most of your spells, and Ring of Paramania does enough damage and helps you get rid of through spell resistance that you can't get rid of that either. Oh well. This is armor plus five. You've got Mage Armor on anyway, so it's cancelled. Actually, yeah, you, you specifically don't need Mage Armor on you anymore. Mage Armor on you is no longer required. Because you've got a plus five thing and you haven't got um, stuff anyway. Uh, okay. So we could go up and down. We could go, we could go up here and bypass everything. Ooh, there's a loot over there. This was simple enough. I want to go to the port, I think. Loot. Oh, God. I can put something in here, but fuck knows what it is. There's something I can put in there, but I don't know what that thing would be. Whatever it is, I haven't got one. Um... Something over there. Over where? A trap. Over here? Where is this, where is this trap? Up there, it looks like. Okay. Commoners, beggars, and so forth, and commoners, and commoners, and beggars, and commoners. Beggar. A specific beggar has actually has been marked out. Portal over there. So yeah, we can, we can teleport to the Bad Luck Travel, experiencing the bliss. Oh, right. Of course. Red Mask is probably the person who can do the fight in the arena. Um, oh. Hey, hello. Oh, there was, there was conversation here, what was that? random fight here. Okay, cool. Random fights. Um, intoxicated Demon's Leader. You're a little 15 Slayer. Hey, guess what? Ember, move over here, please. Burning Arc. Kills two of them. Nenio. That'll do. You get here Ring of Protection plus two, or Learn plus two. Dead Eye. An axiomatic Long Blow plus four. Really? Hello. Okay, hang on. Aru isn't with his, in the team, but Aru could do with a good bow. Plus four composite axiomatic bow. Which again is really good against demons. Why the hell you had one? Christ knows why. Did I not loot the things? I did not. Silly me. Uh, okay, that's a common over there. Like you, they were in a fight and we just started the fight, so. No, it's fine. That's the bad luck time. Okay, let's go back to the Nexus, because we can. It's, it's, the easiest way is to get out of this is to go via. Hang on. No, we can go go back via the bad luck tavern. So, where's the portal? Portal's over there, right? Portal's over there. Let's go over here. Portal into the bad luck tavern. Find out about the. Hang on. Wait, 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 wait. No, get over, damn it. It's 
the Battle Bus Arena. Good. <laughs> In the logistical nightmare that this city must be. Geocaught, a handsome young man with a tousled black hair, strolls casually towards the demon surgeon. Oh, master of stitches, artist of the scalpel and genius of the surgical profession. Tell me, is your heart free? The young man has a glove puppet in his hand, a dragon made of rags with, with buttons for eyes. He raises it up and begins to ventriloquize loudly. His voice is surprisingly deep. Also, do you have an hour of free time tonight? How about a romantic dinner? Are you trying to flirt with him? Damon gives you a sly wink and continues his conversation with the demon. No, I would not like to say that my heart is free. Right now it contains three copper rods, 200 grams of enchanted quicksilver, and a fair dose of lamia liver extract. He pauses and gives the young man an expressing glance. But I could give you an hour or two of my time for something other than dinner. Has anyone ever told you you have beautiful smooth skin? I happen to be in need of some. The man deftly steps aside to avoid the demon's outstretched claws. He jots something down in his notebook. Who the hell are you, buddy? Okay, let's go find out what we can do here. Um, lootable, lootable. Loot. Loot the things. <gasps> Acorn pie recipe. New recipes. Yay. Hmm. Oh, let's quickly just do, just do, just do um, a scroll check. Anything you want to learn? Anything you can learn that you haven't learned already? Nope, you've done every you've learned everything you can learn. Okay, good. Well done you. No time for idling. Okay, we have citizens, we have commoners. <laughs> A commoner gibberleth is an interesting concept. Um we can sp Commoner Lilitu, a citizen Lilitu. Not Minago, just a, a, a regular Lilitu. A demon in a blood spattered apron fussily shoves a few foul looking chunks of flesh into his apron pockets. His fingers are fitted with horrible steel claws, and you bear the unpleasant sound of metal on metal as he slides them against one another like scissors. He looks up in your direction with an insane grin, and his voice makes your skin crawl. Are you one of the gladiators? Do you need a healer? Or are you here because you want to become more powerful? The demon looks at Wenduag with interest. Who created you? How many animals were killed to make you? Your mutations are extremely attractive, and your body radiates strength. When dog's voice is soft, almost sultry purr. Touch me, and I'll tear your hands off with my teeth. So please, go ahead, give me a reason. Can you make me stronger? The healer looks at you eagerly. You hear the shrill screech of metal against metal as he rubs his steel claws together tightly. Ah, for 30,000 gold, I'll stitch you up into something better. Much, much better. When dog bites her lip in thought. So you just have to kill a demon and stitch pieces of the corpse onto your body? That's all it takes to get the power of a demon? I never thought obtaining power would be that quite so simple. The demon grins and gives Ember an appraising glance. I can fix you too, give you new fingers. Would you like that, sweetie? The healer's eyes, beady little eyes glisten, and you hear the rasping sound of his knife-like fingers as he rubs them together impatiently. Ember shakes her head with an embarrassed smile. You're so kind and caring, but no, thank you. I don't need new fingers. You should stitch them onto someone else. Please, will you give them to someone who really needs them? Are you sure? All right, fine, fine. Mr. Mad Scientist, sir, let me offer up myself as a subject for your experimentation. Feel free to carve me up and stitch me back together as you see fit. Please don't do this. Do not let him defile your beauty and corrupt your pure soul. You'll do nicely. The place is still the same, 30,000 gold, but we'll talk about that later. I can't... Can I come back to this? No deal. Make then you Hey, who are you? I'm the most important person in the battle bliss. I'm a healer, or as they call me, a stitcher. They drag those poor bleeding fools from the arena so I can stitch them back together piece by piece. And I do that mean quite quite literally, since most of them are in pieces by the time they get to me. At first I simply reattach the severed limbs of wounded fighters. Now, however, my methods are far more interesting. Someone from Articular's inner circle taught me the secret of grafting flesh. By combining the flesh of different gladiators, I create the strongest, craftiest, most talented fighters. Oh yes, in these chambers invisible gladiators are born. I am so close to achieving perfection, soon my methods will produce better results than the hinging crystals. The cleric wrinkles his nose in disgust. He seems offended. This is not healing. It's some heinous mockery of it. 
A healer should restore Boyer to his natural and healthy state instead of turning it into something disgusting. He does the best he can with his, to help his patients. Here in the Abyss, nothing can be done without pain, suffering, and violence, but he still helps others even if his methods are cruel. His work saves lives. These fighters would die without him. Isn't that better than not helping them at all? Mahindrian crystals? Mahindrian crystals are something of a legend here in the Lucian era. Almost no one knows what they actually are or how to get their hands on them. It all started with a few demons here in the city. These demons suddenly became very powerful in a very short period of time. Their transformation happened almost overnight. According to the rumors, these demons received their incredible powers from Nahindrian crystals. Now all evolutionary is crazy for these crystals. They're all anyone talks about these days. And all your merchants know that if you call your goods Nahindrian, you can easily double the initial price of your wares. Okay, I'm going to save you for a second there, because I kind of want to find out what the hell happens if you let Nanyo get buffed. Pay 30,000 gold coins and make Nanyo stronger. Please follow me. You will drown in an ocean of pain, but you will emerge from it renewed. To your surprise, the surgery takes place in complete silence. When Nanyo returns, she looks distant and emotionless. How do you feel? Fine, I think. She raises her dull eyes to you. When the mad silence is close claim to me, I blocked out the pain. Actually, I forgot the pain even existed. If I'm completely honest, I even forgot that I was a part of an experiment. Such an awkward situation. Maybe I should do it again. Oh no. That's quite enough for you. Your body bears the mark of my genius. The demon turns to you with a smirk. I've already painted on this canvas. Don't tell me I just wasted 30,000 gold on a failed experiment. Science, science requires sacrifice. When something results in failure, it often results in progress and prosperity in the end. Her voice is missing its usual confidence. I hope that was worth the cost. Minion nods, then shrugs uncertainly. I presume it was. It's hard to say for sure because I don't remember anything. Still, I hope that in the near future I'll observe the effects of this surgical intervention so that I can write an article about it for the encyclopedia. I would be disappointed if the experiment failed due to the forgetfulness of its subject. What the fuck just happened to you? Demon Graft Demonic augmented organs grant the wearer plus two natural armor enhancement armor class, plus two inherent bonus to stacks, negative uh, spell resistance, concentration checks, DC, attack, damage rolls, and all saving throws. However, whenever your HP falls below 20%, you enter a frenzy and attack the nearest creature until you die or combat ends. Jesus Christ. Permanent demon graft. Am I, am I doing this to you? Really? Am I doing this to you? I don't know if I'm going to do this to you. You are completely like, neutral. You are like, the most neutral person here. You require my unbiased opinion? I agree. Means it's giving you what? It's giving you plus two natural element armor class. Inherent bonus to overcoming spell resistance, which is helpful. Concentration checks, not relevant. DC is fantastic. If it's increasing your DC by two, it's all really, really good, but this is... I don't know if I want to do this to you. you, kind of, if you I don't want you to lose the, kind of the innocence that makes you Lenio. Huh. You know what? No, I'm not going to do this now. If it comes, if it comes, if it comes down to it, I'll come back to it later on. But I'm not going to do this now because I don't know. This, that just seems wrong and mean. Um. So we, we talk to you then. Let's see anything else. Uh, helpful healer. Okay. You, oh, you're okay. You're. I can. Sh I can sell stuff to you. Okay. So we'll still. We'll see, we can sell crap to you then. Um. Look, plus ones can definitely go. The fours can hang around for a bit longer, I think. The two can go. Ring of protection plus two, you hang around for a bit. Um, those can definitely go. They're mithril, which is why they're not automatically being sold. I was like, why are they not being sold? Because they're mithril. Um, hmm. Anything else I want to get rid of? Hang on. Good question. Do you sell? Do you sell? Hang on, let's find out what. What do you sell? Uh, price in descending order. Dark omen. Yeah, we've, we've seen this several times. Dark veil. We've seen that several times as well. Close the neophyte. Blah, blah, blah. I want to know. Do you sell purifying purifying solutions? I don't think you do, unfortunately. You do. Yoink! Grab all that. 
every single last one of those. Thank you. That's 25 more rests we can do. I might buy a bunch of food, actually. Uh, notable, usable ingredients. I'll buy all the ingredients, because we need to eat anyway. Um... I'm, I'm agonizing whether or not to let Nanyo go through with this. <laughs> I mean, she wants to do it. Seems we, we did. I mean, we saw the effect of it. I, I'm, I'm wondering if it's going to have any effects. We know, we know what it does. It's more like, is it going to have any effects later on in her plot? A stern but tired-looking tiefling observes you politely. His clothes look expensive, but tasteful. He's carrying a large bag, and every once in a while it moves and twitches as if something is inside. Welcome to the Battlebus Arena. My name is Zeklex. I am the arena steward. Your Mangaleth is the master of the arena, but I help him manage his affairs. You look like you're new here. Did you come to spectate the fights or to participate in them? The tiefling has a surprisingly open and honest face. After all these demons, he looks strangely normal. The tiefling looks you up and down with a calm professionalism of a person doing an unpleasant job with diligence. I guess you're one of those who draw the power from elemental planes. That's quite a rare ability here in Lucianera, and for demons in general. You could gift, could become a selling point. Very useful for a gladiator. Oh Christ, I didn't get your name. Uh, is this? No, add that, then do this, and then do that a bit. Your Mangaleth? I remember a demon called your Mangaleth. He was a vile, cunning murderer. He had a way with words that was just as deadly as his skill in battle. There's a rustling sound from within the tiefling's bag, and an imp peeks his head out to look at you. He has large, drooping ears and stares at you with his huge, unblinking eyes. Then, as if suddenly shy, he darts back into the bag and vanishes from sight. I'd like to talk to Nrangaleth. The imp pokes his head out from the bag in surprise. You seem to have aroused his curiosity. His sad, drooping ears pick up with excitement, and he stares at you with big, round eyes. You wish to speak with Nrangaleth? I'm afraid that's impossible. Mangaleth never communicates with anyone except his most trusted aides, and Gelderfang is under strict orders to kill anyone who tries to talk with his master without per permission. Mangaleth believes that minimizing his contact with the outside world will make his audience in the arena want to move even more. I'd like to know more about you. The tiefling smiles wryly and addresses the imp in his bag. You see, Crow? This is why we worked so hard to climb the ranks. We wanted to be important, and now look, this stranger wants to know all about us. I guess that means we're finally a big deal. Who are you? I am the arena steward. My position is prestigious, but my success is high and earned. My life has not been easy. I grew up on the streets of Evolution Era. I was a street urchin, an orphan. I am the result of an act of violence committed against a helpless slave woman. I have always been weak. I have always been surrounded by those who are bigger and stronger than me. All my life I had to rely on my wits to survive. Out on the streets I scrounged around for food and tried to avoid becoming someone else's snack. Fortunately, I had someone else to look out for me. The tiefling takes a small piece of dried meat and holds it close to the bag. Quick as a flash, the scrawny paw dodges from the bag and snatches up the treat. Crow has been my companion for a long time. He's also my partner in business. Together we saved up our money, one coin at a time. We made allies and sought out opportunities for advancement. We've worked hard to climb the ranks of society. In the beginning, our goals were simple. Never starve again, never live in poverty again, and never fear for our lives again. Trust me, those goals aren't easy to accomplish here in the Abyss. You have to be very influential in the city to achieve any of those things. We've managed to make our goals a reality. In fact, we've been doing quite well for ourselves here in Lucian Era. And what do you do here? Ermangaleth is an artist, not a clerk. That's why I have so many responsibilities. I search for new fighters, I make the, chart, the fight charts, and arrange the fights so that the op opponents are evenly matched. And of course, I organize all the matches. Unfortunately, my master has a habit of interfering with my work. He's been very involved lately, and as a result, the fights have been terrible. The combat turns into meaningless carnage. There's no skill, no strategy involved. And of course, no one wants to place bets on fights like that. Everybody already knows who's going to win. They aren't even fights anymore, they're just public executions. That's also a form of entertainment, of course, but it's not what our audience wants. You don't look like you belong in the Abyss. 
Im peeks out of the bag and the tiefling grins as he pats his companion's tender little head. That's because I like to stay organized. When I was growing up I made mental lists of all my possessions, my money, my enemies and allies, my schedules, and even my goals. I was weaker than everyone else and these mental calculations helped me to survive. It was the only advantage I had, the only way that I could gain the upper hand, and keeping lists became a habit. I have found that it disciplines the mind and keeps my thoughts organized. I'm an accountant by nature, and my ability to bring order to a place where chaos reigns has turned to be out to be a profitable skill. And who's the imp? The tiefling smiles as a little creature peeks out curiously from the bag. It has big drooping ears, a small round face, and big round eyes that gaze at you curiously. This is Crow. He's my business partner. He also happens to be my familiar. I have no idea how he wound up in the abyss, but he's not had an easy time of it either. If our paths hadn't crossed, we'd both be dead by now. He's probably the only one I trust. The imp fidgets beneath your gaze and finally darts back down to the bag to hide. Not to see an imp, an infernal creature, here in the abyss. The fundamentally chaotic energy of this place must be repugnant to a creature born of a plane of order and evil. The imp is an infernal creature. How has he managed to survive in the abyss? Zrex looks at you with respect. It's nice to meet a person who knows the difference between an imp and a closet. Yes, Crow is a devil, though a lesser one. I have no idea how he ended up here, but at the time he met, he was extremely unwell. Staying in the abyss was not much easier for him than staying under water would be for a mortal. So that's how I spent my, the first real money I managed to earn here, on this fine, stolen-to-order bag. It's had magic symbols sewn inside that it's make it sincere and bearable for Crow. What about the battle list itself? What would you like to know? The arena's operations are simple. It functions like a pyramid. Expectations at the lowest level, regular gladiators on the next tier, followed by the members of the Nahindrian League, the champion towers above them all, and the master of the arena stands on its shoulders like an omnipotent god. What happens in the arena? The battle list is a gladiatorial arena. You must understand, the fights are a big deal in Lucian era. They are the city's primary source of gossip and entertainment. But they are much more than that. These gladiatorial matches serve as a kind of ritual, a daily offering to the demonic way of life. And these daily offerings, these rituals, are performed in the battle bliss. In a way, it's more of a temple than an arena. The arena is the only reason the city is still standing. Without the battle bliss, the demons would have brought Lucian era to ruins long ago. But instead of tearing down the city with their rage and their desire for slaughter, they come here to quench their thirst for blood. You see, the arena gives them a sort of release that allows them to satiate their lust for violence. Who runs the place? His name is Ermangaleth. He's a Cambian. He was born in the Abyss as the offspring of an incubus and a mortal woman. The incubi are naturally persuasive, but Emangaleth's father was especially skilled at using his words to manipulate and control. Well, his son inherited his silver tongue. His ability to influence a crowd is unmatched. With just the sound of his voice, he can instantly instigate a riot or make a screaming group of demons fall silent and listen to his every word. When he warms up the audience, the spectators are ready to jump into the arena and fight the gladiators themselves. Who is the strongest fighter? The champion's title is currently held by an incubus named Gelderfang. He is the deadliest of Ermangaleth's fighters and serves as his bodyguard. He is a true artist of death and destruction. Of course, there are other fighters in the abyss who are more dangerous, but no one can kill like he does. He makes every death exquisite and prolongs the agony and suffering of his opponents. He can transform any fight into a spectacular show, he turns combat into a performance, and knows how to create a dramatic spectacle out of the most mundane match. There are only two things Gelder Fang wants in life, pleasure and murder. They are his obsession, and he feeds that obsession every time he steps into the arena. After all, everyone in Lucian era knows his name, and the audience yells it at the top of their lungs every time he kills one of his rivals. And what is the Nahindrian League? It's an odd name, I admit, but it's in keeping with the latest trend. Nahindrian is a very popular word in Lucian era these days. The Nahindrian League is led by the arena's current champion, Gelderfang, and only the very best gladiators can become members. The fighters of the League belong to Ermangaleth, but not all of them are demons. Lucianera serves as a crossroads between multiple worlds, and fighters come from many different planes to perform in the arena. I've heard of the Hindrian Crystals. Do you get them if you're a member of the League? The Lex Zek Lex gives you a faint smile. They'd like you to believe that, but no. The members of the Hindrian League are no different than the Hindrian Booze Vendor in the Tavern, or the Hindrian Whip Supplier at the Flesh Markets. None of them actually have access to the Crystals. I've heard that the Hindrian Crystals contain immense power. Gelderfang would love to have one, and there are rumors that Enmangaleth promised him a crystal in exchange for his services as a bodyguard. Of course, it wouldn't surprise me to find out that Ermangaleth was lying. I'm not even sure he even knows how to get his hands on a Nahindrian crystal. Okay, so we have, so we can come back here and become a gladiator. We can come back here and give Nenio... Hang on, I'll start writing this stuff down, actually. Hang on. Because we're just going like, gonna to run around and find out what's there to do here. So, in the arena, you have to be... There's a... Like we have to be like the, the overall goal here is to be seen by is to make is to make um is to get a meeting with um to get a meeting with uh, Nocticulus. To, is to go is to meet the city's rulers. The only way you get to do that is people know who you are. 
So there's, there's giving you like they're giving you ways of doing that. One by visiting Valexia. One by becoming a, the, the the champion. Basically, you have to become famous and get Lockticler's attention, and then or you can start working in the hard uh, the the harem of ardent dreams. So in the arena, we become a gladiator or um, demon craft Nenio. So the things we can do there. Interpretation. There's also, there's also okay, that's there. Okay, so this 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 is this bit sorted out. This stuff. Hang on, where? What? Oh, I guess the uh, guards. We can't really go over there. Okay. Right. Um. What's the way out? Okay, that's over here. Things right. Let's go to the port as well. Because you, you can't. We can't. We can't go to the harem of ardent dreams or whatever until we get to the middle. Until we go to the middle area. We can't go to the middle area until um, until we get past here. We can't meet Valexia until we go to the upper area. So we can bypass Edlick Tavern. There's still something here about getting fights ordered. What is it? Is it? I'm assuming it's you. Red mask. No, not you. So something here is about getting the fights organized. Ooh, is it Mielera? No. Slave, slave, owner. Oh, I thought it was, it was me. It's not you. So what here do you have to do specifically? Why is this listed as a place? Is there an option I have to talk to you about? And the commander of the Galarian Prison, there's some respect. So, you're a big deal on Galarian, whatever. Yeah, so basically... Just... Yeah, there's nothing really there happening, they didn't think so. Uh -huh. Okay, let's go to the port. It's the best way to go to the port. Why is that a... I don't understand why that's linked to the Bad Tavern. Is that because... That's, is that just because that's the, the travel point, point inside the town? Maybe? Right, let's get out of here. Not here, we'll go, we'll go out this way. Why do you know we get to bypass? Um. You can basically bypass the entire town and we can just up here on the right side, go, go to the port and see what's in the port. Skip 14 buffs. Okay, they're still active. And will be for several hours. Okay, the port's over here, right? Port. Go to the port. Hmm. Chaplain Helmsman. Cambian bar, okay. What are you? Baba warrior. Succubus enchanter, dretch, slave. Okay, we can go down here, we can go over here. Let's go down here. Ooh. Actual sodding cutscene. Interesting. That's the ship. That's the ship from the DLC. <laughs> there you go. That's the that's the ship from the DLC. Okay. Helmsman's over there. Helmsman's also over here. Um, there's a chaplain. And there's your shop. Eclectic, if you're still here, this is your shop. I wonder if you have to have the DLC for this, but that's the shop. That's in Descending Art, please. Playing Deluxe, Places of Bravery. Nope, crap. Places of Art, Lockpickers Kit plus three. In, we're currently running Lockpickers plus two. 
Yeah, so we can get a plus three. I mean, it's only going to cost us 10k. It's actually not too bad. Um... Anything else here of any interesting? Let's get two races of archery. Bartender, yeah. yeah he's, he's he's definitely the, the shop for the um, the DLC. So if he's here, then yeah. A lot of extra stuff here. We can just chuck nothing, nothing, nothing major. You don't nothing to buy here, but these are ways to sell stuff. And I assume that the Cambion is there, the Helmsman's here. Yep, same thing as we can just carry on with we can just carry on with the treasure of the Midnight Owl. He's just there. Okay. What's up here then? In, if you're doing the DLC standalone, I think here you have some is the, is the person where you get your party you get your party members here. All right, so we're not doing this right now. I'm just gonna, no, it's there. So I think the only thing we have to do is the arena. I was gonna, I was looking around to see if there's more stuff to do, but I don't think there's anything else. I think it's just the arena. Interesting. Very interesting. I was I was expecting there to be more. But it might just be the arena now. <laughs> what I don't know is how to get on top of these buildings. That's the only thing I don't understand is how to get on top of these buildings. And if also, if are they worth it? Is I don't see I don't see any way to get on top of these buildings like this. You can ask that. Okay, am I missing? Like, am I am I just supposed to be using shenanigans here? Is it worth it? <laughs> no, probably not. Is it just like random crap? There we go. Again. Random crap, okay. Is it just. Do you have to use di Dimension Door? Because it doesn't seem to be like any other way up here. Isn't like a silly way to use a bunch of dimension door stuff for no reason. I guess I guess it's a reason to use dimension door. You're puzzling any other solution. Alright, fine. Let's actually go to the... Let's go to the inn. Because we can get out the inn, get out the inn of the other side. Let's go out the other side. We can go... We can, we can see about becoming a... Uh, we can see about becoming the champion, I guess. I wonder if there's solo fights. And if there are solo fights... I wonder how well I can actually handle myself. <laughs> I'm, I, I hit like a truck, and I tend to go quite fast, but can I go fast enough? Right. Sleeping here is fun. Oh, you mean in the pub? You mean in the bar? So I can't sleep here. Well, right now I don't currently need a rest, but if I next need a rest, I'll, I'll make sure to sleep in the bar. You know what? Fine. Nenio. Have it done. Get it done. It's gonna get done. How do you feel? Blah, blah, blah. What was worth the cost? Good. Nenio has Demon Graft. 
Right. I want all Volutioneer to know my name. I want you to arrange a match for me against your strongest gladiator. The tiefling falls silent. It looks as though he's calculated something in his head. Finally he responds. If that truly is your goal, you'll have to defeat the current champion. If you kill Gelderfang, your name will be on everyone's lips. But you'll have to prove yourself if you want to face the champion. A fight with Gelderfang is a big deal here in Lucianera. Only members of the Nahindran League, the elite gladiators of the Battle Bliss, are considered worthy opponents. Killing others just to entertain spec- Sorry. Killing others just to entertain spectators? These creatures of the abyss. So death and destruction in such a careless, casual manner. I know that our mission is important, and I know we can't allow ourselves to get distracted by feelings and emotions, but smashing skulls and eviscerating bodies just to entertain these evil creatures? I am my day, it makes me sick just to think about it. But it is extremely difficult to join the League. You have to slay an active member and take their place. So if you wish to fight the champion, you will have to spend a lot of time in the arena. However, if you would like, I can arrange a fight between you and another newcomer. If you can prove yourself in battle, I will be able to find a match against a more reputable opponent. I've killed hundreds of demons. Why do I have to pro prove myself to anyone? I'm sure you fought countless enemies back on Galarian, but this is the Abyss. No one cares. If you want the others to respect you, you'll have to prove yourself in the arena. They won't take you seriously until you show them what you can do. Very well. I'll prove myself. I'll fight another newcomer. I'm glad you were a recent understanding. I'm annoyed they make it out. There's four different ways to get the attention of this town. They knew I figured out to get into this lad here. Um... You can you seem to be able to bypass the guards by climbing up some buildings. And if you get to Middletown, I'm assuming you can go talk to the people in Middletown. You're in luck. For the past couple of days, Ermangaleth has been obsessed with recruiting new talent. He wants to introduce a promising new fighter into the arena, and I think you could play the part perfectly. Ermangaleth may even give you a chance to earn a place in the Hintrin League. However, if you do become a candidate for membership, be careful. You'll likely be matched up against a very dangerous opponent. Who is my opponent? Some nameless newcomer. Will it be a fight to the death? Of course. Every fight must end in the death of the gladiator. It's the most important part of the show. Any of our spectators come here just to watch the gladiators finish off, all, finish off their fallen opponents. It's there are two fights you don't get if you don't go up there. Okay. We want to see you spectacular death scenes and cunning coup de grace, coups de grace. Of course, some fetters survive the ordeal and can be put back together, but I wouldn't bet it. <clears throat> I wouldn't bet on it if I were you. I would. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see what happens. Wish you good luck. If you die, greet death with a sweet kiss. Better still, slay all your opponents and return live and victorious. This fighter is a nobody from nowhere, but if she survives, you'll all worship the ground she walks on. Is it the entire party? Are you kidding me? Is this a party on fight? Today we have Dubis on a welcome to the arena, Chandra Nalar of Galarian. Let's see what moniker she runs for herself if she lives that long. Who will stand against her? Oh, well, they may be small, but they are far from harmless. If you underestimate them, they'll bite off your family jewels. An outsized amount of spite. Wrapped up in a tiny, ugly package. It's Smugwug's wild gang of methods. I'll bat your nose off, you Galarian scum. I am the wild and terrible Smugmug. Tremble before me. We'll soon know which of these two titans will emerge victorious. Fighters, commence battle. Are you kidding me? Or we're doing this as... A as a party? Really? Like, I thought I was having to fight these people solo. If I have to fight this as a party, this is going to be a fucking joke. You're kidding me. I swear it. You're actually... You're actually, 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 literally kidding me right now. Twenty hit points. Twenty hit points! With an AC of seventeen and literally... They are literally shit! Like, where is it? Give me here. Zero point eruption. They're just killed. Loads of them. Smug mug 
uniquely because he's a bit... Also, I caught them by surprise. I'm not entirely sure how that was a surprise, but apparently that was a surprise. They're dead. Hi, Vu. We have a winner! Oh, hello, righteous fighters. She emerges triumphant from this dangerous, violent conflict. They didn't even go. Chandra and Lara, the Mephit Slayer. Hey, who knows? Maybe someday we'll get a chance to fight against a member of the Nahindran League. Once they're accepting Mephits into their ranks. Demand explanations from Zelix. Okay, right. Demand explanations from Zelix. Oh, they didn't. I, was, I, I had a chance to big myself up. Why are you walking through the fucking fire, you colossal idiots? Why are you walking through the fucking fire? Why? You're all idiots. Every last one of you. This is my time to shine. I'm pretending while you go. Oh, okay, right. Thing. How can I be of assistance? Is this your idea of a joke? Were you trying to humiliate me? Why did you put me against such a ridiculous opponent? Your conversation is interrupted by an eccentric looking demon with suspiciously bright eyes. Judging from the slur of his words, he's under the influence of some kind of mind altering substance. Ha! Look at that! That's the Mephit Slayer. Train hard, girl. Maybe someday you'll be strong enough to fight a real dretch. Zach Lex frowns in irritation. The something speed he produces a dagger from his sleeve and cuts the demon's throat in one second. Water step. in the Same fire! Movement. Why? Water in the fire! Why? I don't understand. No! <laughs> Thanks, Mort. Had no bits in the room. <laughs> oh my god, I love that clip. I love the dog. The dog is amazing. The dog is so good. Ah, 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 oh. Get stuck in my teeth. Zeklex frowns in irritation. With some nothing speed, he pushes a dagger from his sleeve and cuts the demon's throat in one swift, clean movement. The insolent demon gurgles, staring at the tiefling in surprise. He slowly sinks to the floor beneath the contemptuous gaze of his killer. The tiefling cleans his base, and with what is quite possibly the only handkerchief in the abyss, his face is pale, and he looks slightly sick as he glances at the corpse. What a brute. He mutters quietly to himself, then he turns to you. Please, listen to me before you draw your weapon. This was an outrage, yes, but it wasn't my idea. This was done on Irmangalet's orders. He came up with a brilliant idea to match you up against the Mephit. He thought the crowds would find it funny. I couldn't stop him, but I assure you this will never happen again. Quick as a flash, Zeklex produces a gold coin from his bag and places it into your hand. Here, this is for you. From now on, you can freely use the transportation arch which is located near the Battle Bliss. This is one of the privileges afforded to the Ukrainian Arena's gladiators. I demand a proper fight. Zeklex closes the bag hastily to prevent the dim's agitated effort to escape, and I promise that I will arrange a proper fight for you. But first, I need you to do me a favor. I'll arrange a match for you against the Flayer Twins. However, they were supposed to fight someone else, so I'll have to find them a replacement. Unfortunately, we don't have enough decent fighters left in the arena. I would be very grateful if you could produce, procure a new batch of gladiators for me. I will cover the costs, of course. We were asked to kill those little mephits, and we did. Now we are asked to do another bad thing. They do not see us as crusaders anymore. They see us as one of their own. So I need to buy these gladiators at the flesh markets? Is there anything else I should know? A lot of slavers at the flesh markets. Ermangaleth usually buys flatters from Sakaris or Wirlong, but you may find other suppliers. I will not become a slave trader. Zeklex frowns and exchanges glances with the imp as he peeks out the bag. Why not? Does it violate your principles? This is the abyss. Scruples won't do you any good here. In fact, I advise you to keep your morals on a tight leash if you want to survive. But fine, Lamash, you take them. I'll try to make sure your fight with the flare twins takes place as soon as possible. I don't like being called a Mephit Slayer. I want to change my title. There's nothing you can do about that, I'm afraid. The crowd loves it and it's all that matters to your Mangala. You'll remain a Mephit Slayer for as long as the audience finds it amusing. I'm ready to enter the arena. As you wish. It'll be a difficult fight. 
This opponent is more dangerous than the last one you faced, so make sure you're fully prepared before you enter the arena. However, if you win this fight, you'll be one step closer to earning your place in the Nahindrian League. Who is my opponent? Oh yes, the Flayer Twins, a dangerous duo with an impressive number of victories. They have a reputation in the arena, so defeating them will bring you honor and prestige. However, you should remember that their stage name was given to them for a reason. Let's go. Water levels when they were walking into the fire. Ah. She's defeated a formidable enemy, Smug Mug the Mephit, but she wants more. Please welcome the heartless executioner from Galarian, Chandra Nalar the Mephit Slayer. So who will she fight today? I'll give you a hint. They get under your skin. Oh yes, one day they decided to get under Gladiator's skin, so they killed one, flayed him, and wore his skin as a suit. Meet the duo who makes all tins terrifying. Today they're going to dress themselves in the height of Galarian fashion, the Flayer Twins. Ha, I'll make a pair of shoes out of you, you soft and spineless outworlder. Outsider. We'll see which contestants survive and which ones decorate the arena with their dead bodies. Fighters, commence the battle! Where are my people here behind me? Come on, catch up. Get off the, get out of the fucking... Jesus Christ, you're all fucking stupid. Brother Flayer, Sister Flayer. You know what? Fuck you. Am I supposed to play fair? I'm not playing fucking fair. Get wrecked. If this were a fair fight, it would have been boring. Bermangalith will never allow boredom in this arena. So what did you do? I did... I dealt damage to you, that's fine. Cool, 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 cool. And then you did something... Then you teleported us... all over the shop. You basically split us all up. Okay, right, that's what you did. Dick. Um... Oh, how much health have you actually got? 290. Hellfire Ray! Surrender. Oh no, out of range, fair enough. Wendu? Bory McBoreface? On no one eight fine. Ivo Guide my blade. Hellfire Ray. That chunked your health considerably. We can now, we can, oh my god, we can cast that as standard. Oh, beautiful. Cast it. Wreck Brother Flayer, please. You've ruined my clothes! This suit used to be the skin of a respectable demon. You're, you're, you're saying stuff, but I can't hear what you're saying. The Flayer Twins are a duo no longer. Something of a new nickname. Apparently. Uh, Nenio. Demand explanation from Zeklex. What a heavy blow to Lucianera's fashion scene. What a magnificent fight. Despite my cunning schemes and despite the extensive experience of her rivals, the victory belongs to the Mephit Slayer. So exciting. Give people a quick heal real fast. Leader Manderson. <laughs> He's like, you keep giving us shit fights, buddy. I killed a fucking Baylor. Not sure what you want from me. My fight in the room was far from fair. Care to explain? Im squeals angrily as he starts to get out from the bag. Zeklex holds the bag shut, fighting to keep his belligerent companion inside. I swear it was Imrangalek's idea. As you should already know, he's not a fan of fair fights. I regret that you've been caught in his trap. However, you held up well. You've got talent. I may be able to arrange a fight with you against a serious opponent. Maybe even the champion. I want to challenge the strongest fighter in the arena. 
Things don't work like that around here. Gelderfang only fights members of the Hinging League, and a fight without him is a big deal. After his last incident, Imrangal strictly forbade him from entering the arena without permission. But Gelderfang is his bodyguard, after all. If you want to fight the champion, you'll have to join the Nahindrin League. There's only one way to do that. By killing another member of the League. But fighting a member of the League is a privilege. You'll have to earn the right to face them in battle. Now, I might be able to help you on that front, but first you need to do me a favor. I want to give a gift to the current champion. I'd like to send in the most beautiful succubi the Ten Thousand Delights. I need you to make a deal with them, and convince them to provide their services to Gelderfang. If you do this, Gelderfang will be happy for me to arrange a fight between you and a fighter without delay. Where can I find these succubi? There's a brothel in the middle city called the Ten Thousand Delights. It's run by succubi and is located near the border of the upper city. It's a magnificent palace of pleasures. However, you should be careful. Once you're in there, you want to keep track of your coin purses and the time. I've known demons who stopped in the brothel for a quick rendezvous and didn't come back out until years later. I need the gold up front. Keeping smiles politely. I'm afraid that's out of the question. Here in Lucianir, we only pay money up front if you're truly desperate. I don't think our current situation is dire enough to justify such extreme measures. Gold to three. God damn it. I arrange the deal, you arrange the fight for me. Let's hope your efforts will be successful. Right, so you have to go we have to go get the damn sucky boy. Right, fine. You so are you demon graft? You are in fact demon graft, okay. Have we done enough shenanigans? To be able to get through the gates. Or not. The gates are there, if I remember correctly. Excuse me. The other gates are here. Senior guard. Do you know do you know enough of me? Hey, it's the Mephit Slayer herself. Wanna go through? No can do, whatever. Fine, I was I can I can I can intimidate you, but I wanna see if I can do this the way that you want me to do this. The bypassing way. Um Where's the bypass way? It was over here, wasn't it? There's something over here. There's still something needs to do, something that fits there, we don't know what that is yet. Right. Get up there. Get up there. We bypass the guard. In this strange abyssal realm, space sometimes behaves in weird ways. By turning the camera south, north, east, or west, you can move the parts of the island around, even floating cities opening new paths. So we're currently up here. There's loot over here. Climb the rooftop over there. Something over there. A trap over there, which can be a connect. Where, where's that trap leading to? Where's the deep? Where's the, the end of that trap? There. Okay. Middle city. We've arrived at the middle city. There's a slave up there. We just bypassed the. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I want to. I want to start a fight with those guards. Mutafa, Mutasafan. This demon looks frail and sickly, especially in comparison to his mighty entourage that travels with him. His voice sounds dull and tired, but his demeanor is calm and self-assured. He clearly believes himself to be in full control of the situation. A mortal with mythic abilities, how fortunate that you have made your way to the Abyss. Moreover, you have come to Lucianera, which makes things even more convenient for me. Yes, what a stroke of luck. You see, I need you to be my test subject. Who are you? The demon remains silent for a moment. Either he's hesitant to reveal his name, or he is simply enjoying, enjoys prolonging suspense. I am Mutaf Safin. I am, at present, Hep Zamira's most trusted alchemist. I am on an urgent mission for her. Perhaps you can even guess what it is. Xanthir Vang was working on something similar in your world wound. Of course, it was a mistake to instruct such a work to someone who wasn't a demon. He did not fully appreciate the honor he had been given. No wonder his enhanced demons couldn't protect him. But it does not matter. I am superior to him in all respects, and I keep better pets. 
Greetings, fellow scientist. May I ask what is your speciality? What experiments do you undertake at work and in your spare time? And would you like to conduct a joint experiment with me? Piss off. <laughs> Surely it is dangerous for such a valued scientist to stroll around the Lucian era ambushing enemies. Believe it or not, I am absolutely no danger. You didn't mean to be what? Still need to study. Take a part. Test. For the first time you hear enthusiasm in a demon's voice, you see I actually like you very much. Though I doubt the way my way of expressing it will bring you much enjoyment. I'm afraid the demons you've met previously have given you the wrong impression about our kind. You may think we only want to poison and destroy, especially when it comes to crusaders and their leaders. <laughs> yeah, then Nenio never finds a good lab partner. No, that's not entirely true. Nenio managed to get a demon graft because she found someone who... Wasn't exactly experimenting, but someone who... Has, like, someone was doing something nefarious. She volunteered and actually had got the chance to go through with it. But that's not who I am. I am a different breed. I love everything that is new, unexplored, and untested. And I am quite positive that if I get enough of your blood and tissue, I can create something new and unique from them. Angels, for example, make excellent fuel for our machines. What uses could be found for such an, from such an unusual mortal? I don't normally like biting demons, but this one is different. I'll be sure to chomp down on him right now. So, are you going to attack me, or...? Yes! Let's get started, shall we? Servants, you don't have to take this specimen alive, I just need the body. Okay, so what are you... Yeah, they're, not under... they're not surprised, thank god for that. Uh, a level 4 mythic? You you are in fact mythic, okay. Are you a lot mythic as well? No, I'm not. You're not in fact mythic. Um, how many over there? Nope, this is a surprise round, okay. The light take you. When do? No match for me. Socio? Be gone, fiend! Xbox <laughs> Pro. Stupid. Um, okay, we can't do that. That so we can do. We can do that. Almost a soften. Your time is over. That takes out most of your health. Uh, a large chunk of your health. Bismuth. Uh, immediately go for. I can move over here. And hit them all with a fire snake. Although they have evasion, and you have a two to evade. Okay, fine. Nenio. Are you immune to... St you have... You're not immune to, to fear, are you? No, you're not immune to fear. Will you be so clear? Kind, please, to just kill him? He's immune if I doesn't kill her? Why? Why are you immune to... Wait, why? You are immune to fear, okay. Damn. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hasted. Boring McBoreface is actually straight up dead, dead. So we need to re use him to res you up. So, so uh, Okay, start here. Do, do, do that. I'm also gonna start hitting here. When do? Chandra. Obliterate, you please. Um, we need to cast... Um, you don't know the Breath of Life, do you? No. Unfortunately. Heal you up. Nenio. I'm pretty sure we can kill you out, right? You've got 10 hit points. Magic missile. Oh, that. 
Okay, that's gonna be maximized. Right, fine. Nenio. That was educational. Perhaps too educational. I will take my leave. A lot of people just died there. Holy shit. Echo of Discari. Oh, literally the Echo of Discari. Shit. Okay. A monstrous shadow appears somewhere at the edge of your vision. It does not seem to be in hurry to approach, and it keeps its distance as it begins to speak. The shadow's voice is very strange. It is constantly shifting. One moment it is young and melodious, and the next it rasps and rattles with age. However, despite the different intonations, the voice has a stern, ominous quality that never changes. Um, am I gonna- am I gonna bother with this? I heard your toy soldier crusaders had taken over the Midnight Fane and the rift located there. But I never thought you'd have the nerve to descend into the abyss. I assumed you'd block the underground passages, put guards out by the rubble, and sit there, shaking, waiting for someone to attack you again. I know that, fiend. Champion, this is the Echo of Discari, the avatar of our arch enemy. This is a mighty, cunning, and vengeful opponent. He cannot see or hear me, but he will pounce if he knows I am here. He hates everything related to Iomade. Be cautious. The Echo of Discari is the Lieutenant of Discari. Basically, is a clone of Discari. <laughs> Whereas... Um, but, uh, Daphomet uses his daughter Hebzamira. Discari has the Echo. The Echo of Discari. I know who you are. You come from the land of Iomade's servants. And Iomade's servants know me. For I have killed many of them. That voice reminds me of Frank Horrigan. What do you want from me? It may surprise you, but... Nothing. You overestimate your importance, mortal. You probably think your victories in Dresden and the Midnight Fane have dealt us a fatal blow, don't you? But my lord's hordes are endless, and there are other rifts in the wound that will serve our purpose when the hour comes. So no, I did not come here for you, mortal. So, after being defeated in Canabras, Dresden, and Midnight Fane, you no longer think these places are significant. How convenient. Look back across the history of the Crusades, and remember how many times you have been defeated. A few scattered victories mean nothing. I was looking for Mutasafin. I need to speak with him. I stumbled upon you by accident. What a shame. The demon you were looking for ran away from me in a panic. I doubt Mutasafin even knows how to panic. You did not pose a real threat. He could not be killed through conventional methods. He left because there was nothing else for him to do here. Also, I'm sure he was in a hurry to explain to Hepsamira why he wasted a few demons on such a stupid escapade. She will not be happy about that. Oh no, she most certainly will not. You don't want to fight, you can go your own way, and I'll go mine. Be gone, and hope we do not meet again. You will still perish in the abyss, but death by my hand will be far, far more painful than any other possible demise you might suffer here. Bye bye. Oh, now you stop voicing him? The Abyss is full of hideous creatures, but you have just met one of the worst. The Echo of Discari is an old enemy of mine. He is both cunning and vile. I wish I could comprehend his dark machinations, but I do not understand why he has revealed himself to us in this way. It seems unlikely that he would just come here to gloat. The Angel falls silent, Austin thought. Oh, and the... I... The vague outline of the apparition does not allow you to see the face and appearance of the speaker, but you recognize the voice without difficulty. It is your Azata companion, early sunset, and his words radiate dismay. Chandranalar, I have found you at long last. 
Even with my spells, it was no easy feat in the abyss. Why were you looking for me? I bring you the latest loot from Galarian. Surely you will want to hear it, and I was sincerely worried about you. The abyss is a dangerous place. It is far too easy to disappear there. How wonderful it is to see that I am not alone, and that some of your allies from other planes are willing to rush to your aid. Early Sunset does not react to the angel's words. He either does not see the angel, or he does not consider it necessary to answer. Where were you before you came here? I have not yet arrived. I am on my way at the edge of the abyss. I first wanted to contact you to make sure that you were still alive. I did not expect you to find you at Illusionera. It is a lasty place, and its ruler is more dangerous than most of the other demon lords. It goes without saying that you should be incredibly careful here. So I see. What now? I will soon arrive and meet you in person. Forgive me, but I do not wish to appear within the walls of Illusionera. I will go to the place of the former rift in the Midnight Fane, and I will await for you there. When we speak, when we meet, we can speak and exchange views. Good luck. My thoughts are with you. Okay, cool. We got more friends. Uh, loot, loot, loot. Some potions of mage armor. Some really shit potions of mage armor. To be fair, that guy fucking rolled us. Like, I don't doubt that we can kick his ass, given half a chance, but he went really, really fast and got out. Is it, he got? If we go before him, we get a much better chance of winning. He went before us, and therefore we got wrecked. Um, is resolute. Let's heal a bunch of stuff right now. We're healing everyone around us too, which is hilarious. Are we? No, we're not. As I will. Pretty much everyone... Pretty much everybody... Got killed. I'm surprised that Ember didn't. I will help where I can. This war must end. I will lend you my aid. On the play, always better than on the draw. Sorry? On the play, always better than on the draw. That feels like magic, but I don't quite get the uh, reference. Oh my fuck. Oh my fucking god. Well, right now, what I want to do is, is get back to the portal up. Okay, we can portal up. We'll my time to shine. Let's explore this place, first of all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. I just, I just call it play first and draw first. <laughs> to the flesh markets. Oh, someone with a name here. Oh, Curse is down there. Um... Yeah, play first is definitely better than draw first. Play first puts you in... Play first... Draw first puts you in the defensive, basically. Can we talk to the guard? It's the Mephisto herself. What goes with the, the gate? Lower city is disgusting. Okay. Oh, these outsiders. In particular, command the guards to instruct our guests on local customs. We are a welcoming city and happy to see you scum. I mean, happy to see meet you exotic travelers. Anyway, here's a quick guide that will keep you alive in the Lucian era. At all times, no matter what, you need to remember four things. Who rules land under your feet, what they have forbidden you to do, who you can draw your weapon against, and who you want to avoid offending at all costs. Seriously, you'd better be off impaling yourself on your own blade than going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the denizens of this place. Who runs things in the city? Octicula, who else? But she's busy sitting in her palace looking pretty and couldn't care less about our business here. That's why her sycophant Shamira, mistress of the harem of ardent dreams, has the final word on the city's affairs. It's not like she cares what's happening either. She just singles someone out, accuses them of doing some misdeed, and sends them to stew in a cauldron of boiling filth. There's no real rhyme or reason to her behavior. She just does it to keep everyone in line. And, well, it works. Through her power is, though her power isn't unlimited, there are others in the city whose word carries a great deal of weight. Take Hep Samira, for example. She has a great deal of influence being despite being new here, not to mention a demon born of Baphomet. City is her playground. Shamira is the only one she treats as an equal. Stuck up, bitch. If I were you, I'd steer clear of Baphomites. Scheming jerks a lot of them. Lady Valexia in the upper city. She's like the leader of Illusionera's elite. She's always gentle, speaks softly, and never rip rips out anyone's throats in the streets. All in all, I've never met a more sinister and grim creature in my entire life. Ermangaleth, the master of the Battle Bliss, also commands some authority. He's a psychopath even by local standards. This one time he put on quite a show. He invited all the scum in the lower city to a free performance in the arena. 
Then he locked the gate and let loose a deep sea monster in the stands and announced it would cost ten eyeballs per demon to leave. You know, Burgaz? He used to have four eyes. Now he has one. Ah, such slaughter. So makes me giddy with excitement. Among the succubi, Chevaro is in charge. She's an angry bitch, but still acts sweeter than the blood of a righteous man. Inago used to run the Ten Thousand Delights until Chevaro found her way in. She must be quite the weasel, that one. Come to think of it, this city is chock full of bosses. Anyway, anywhere you have two demons, one will always be trying to crust the other under its boot. So what are the local laws? It's not like anyone in Lucianera cares about laws, so we have almost none. Well, there are the guards at the gate to keep the riffraff out of the really nice places, and particularly prohibit anyone from laying a finger on visitors from other planes. We are the trading hub of the Abyss, see? Everyone is welcome. Please come again, thank you very much. But don't unclench your bowels just yet. All of the above applies only to the real movers and shakers. Small fry are either eaten or enslaved. The slave cages are crammed full of extra planar guests. <laughs> Alright, so we can go down there. We have to, we'd have to come back up again. Flesh markets, portal up, lower city. What was this way then? There was. Was it with the loose. Was, it, was this like lootable stuff in here? Where was Little supposed to be? Was it up there? Oh, the stuff up there, right. You can climb all the way up there. The DC 42, Jesus. Oh, hello. There. I'm a ding. Trap where? Where's the trap? Up there, maybe? This place is this place is a, is a this place is literally a nightmare for camera camera movement. Where's the trap? I don't actually know where the trap is. Damn it. Um. Here now, portal up here. Okay, so there's something over there. We can climb up to the upper city from here. If we find a way up there, we can get to the upper city from there. Huh? We can climb up here, climb up there, and that gets us to the upper city. Okay, we can get up around. Galu Warmonger. I'm supposed we can't loot this right now. Watchful conspirators. They will break against our resolve. I saw them. I saw them. Okay, hang on. What? Okay, what just happened here? Uh, combat started. Rolled. Will saving throws against something, I can't know what it was exactly. Dominate person on Nenio has happened, unfortunately. Um, we're going to succeed. Okay, so we've got to basically... Can we stop the dominate person on Nenio? Dispel magic. Dispels domination. Cool, dominate. Nenio's back under our control. Uh... Lilith saving through failed. Aha, you're now for, you're now scared forever. Windu? Let's get started, shall we? Mass hold monster? Who some people were some people were hit by that, you know. Chandra's been paralyzed, shit, okay. Okay, you've been paralyzed, right? Yeah, you've been hold monstered. It's the first time I've heard a spell hostile magic or friendly buffs. You're paralyzed. You can you can do swift and free actions. You can't, you can't, you can't even do that. Yomane? Nenio? Okay, what do you have? What do you got here? You have start casting really scary spells then. Get rid of you. 
You're immune. You're immune to it as well. These people stop being immune to mind affecting shit. You're not. Good. Socio? The boar is paralyzed, I think, but nothing else is. Uh, can we, can we can... So, does regular restoration remove paralysis? Does it have to be, does it have to be, does it? So paralysis, how long is paralysis gonna be going for? Two minutes, shit. Okay. That works. He specifically told me that Greater Restoration stops this, but it's not true, is it? God damn it. Um... Lilithu's down. Wendu? No match for me. Old monster again. Rain of blood. Okay, okay what was Rain of blood? Okay, fine. Chandra, you're, you're okay? We're okay at the moment. Okay, so we're gonna cast straight up. Um, how much health have you got, Galu? And if you got how much health have you got? You got let's, let's kill the little two entirely. Stand down. Get rid of you. Cool. Mm -hmm. Iomene, you've currently got what's currently gathering your goat at the moment. Negative level, rain of blood. Okay, we're gonna hit you with Ennio, we can't kill him with that, so we're gonna hit you with like. I have magic missiles, Ennio. I've really got to clean up your spell list. Holy crap! Socio. Hellfire Ring. I boot. When do? Oh my God! Roll better, please. Chandra, kill him. Thank you. Caution plus two. No challenge at all. Ivory dice, money, spoilers. This is the ten thousand delights, is it? Okay. How does one get up there? I'm assuming it's related to this. Portal down. Okay, let's get, a, let's get across here. Demo down to mob leader. Figured that would happen. Uh, right. Uh, a lot of people are afraid because a lot of people failed their. Uh... Oh, so you're not on the horse anymore, are you? God damn it. Ah, fine. Charge. Charge the stringy demon in. Nenio, you you're you're killable, right? Yes. 
How much? Oh, seriously. Alright, he's down. Um. Socio. You're hasted, I can't remember why you're hasted. You're hasted because something happened on you, wasn't it? Something oh something died next to you. That's why you're hasted, because you got the effect of the damn ring. Um nano. Oh, they've got adhesion, are they? Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and start you with um Hellfire Ray on that stringy demon there. Dead. Yomane. When do good? See, like it, like on the damn, on the damn horse. Thanatotic Titans Minor Rune. Ooh, that's also Belt of the Venerated Champion, plus six Con Belt. A couple of crappy swords and stuff. Plus six con belts. It's nice and everything, but I'd rather I need any decks as well to be able to hit things. Uh, guess that then portal down takes us down over there, I'd imagine. Guess we'll quick save here and keep going up here. So if this if this is the ten thousand delights, what's up here? Oh, guard to the, guards going up to the next level. Let's have a look around up here. All right. Okay. 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 Portal down, portal down. Okay, so we can portal down here. Excuse me. We portal up here. That is portal up. That portal up goes somewhere else. That one went down here. Does that one go? Ooh, does that one go up there? It does. Haha. -ha. So exciting. I have, so, I have since. Hey, have a look. I have since learned or guessed that if I if I find people on the streets with names, that means there's a fight there. Easy. Is there anything else I can go on this? The bows there. The belt of constitution. The rune, wasn't it? The rune of Titan's nonsense. This is what this is through false death. That is the prolonged the thing of prolonged gaze. <laughs> Knowledge Arcana. A success worthy. The absolutionaries seem to enjoy the abundance of lava around them. Demons are not immune to fire. They just like to live close to such a destructive element. They're definitely not immune to my fire. With grace. Not inherently. I mean, Brimorax are immune to fire. That's, that's, that's a separate thing entirely. Yeah. Okay, you have an, you, again, people with names. Over there. I'm rather proud of this one. Okay, so it's... it's I was thinking... They got, it's, it's Titan speak, so I'm assuming those Titan runes fit into the walls somewhere, not necessarily this wall. Can we go up there? Oh, we can go up there. Yeah, it's into the map, okay. In which case, let's go talk to this Latverk character. Oh, no, it happens. I beg you, kind lady, give me a moment of your time. 
A thin ASMR, good breeding apparent in every line of an aristocratic face, addresses you. Greetings and welcome to this dismal plane. My name is Lantwerk and I ask for your help. I beg you, show mercy. Not toward me, but toward these young and innocent maidens. They are my wards, and they were unfortunate enough to be abducted by demons. Siren Ray herself bestowed a revelation upon me which prompted me to settle here and aid my brethren doomed to a dark and cruel fate. But my strength is all but gone, and I swear it. I need assistance now more than ever. Asimar dri women drift out of the house, standing like silent shadows behind Latwerk. The faces of many of the women are covered in scars and their gazes are cold, as if numbed by suffering and despair. Social nods with encouragement and sympathy. Just keep holding on, friend. This is a mad place inhabited by mad creatures, but that makes your work all the more important. This advantage the needy here have no one else to turn to. How may I be of assistance? Freeing enslaved Asimars has become my trade, you see. These women were former captives whom I saved from their monstrous clutches, and I protect them from the best of my ability. But I've heard a new shipment of slaves is about to arrive in the flesh markets, and there's nothing I can do to break their shackles. Please do it in my stead. Please buy their freedom and send the women here. I can see that you are a traveler of means. A single act of kindness should not inconvenience you excessively, but we will forever be forever indebted to you and to your compassionate soul. Such a kind and generous soul is a true rarity in the abyss. We ought to help him, champion. Not just to save the poor slave women, but also to strengthen his faith in the righteousness and the path he has chosen. Okay, so my initial thing that he's just BSing us is either he's also fooled the hand of the inheritor or he's not BSing. So how do these Asimar women end up in the abyss? The abyss hungers for new slaves, so it sends countless raiding parties to other planes to stave off its cravings. These poor young women were captured on Galarian. I have never seen anything violent than those ruthless thrall hunters prowling in search of defenseless victims, sniffing out the weak to enslave, clamping collars around their throats. Next. Where can I find the captives? As far as I know, the thrall hunters were hired by a slave trader named Dinuk. Dinuk. Dyunk. A hideous demon lacking, utterly lacking in morals. Like most demons. Like, in fact, almost all demons. I'm sure you'll find him at the flesh markets, gleefully counting the coins from selling his chattel. Why don't you buy their freedom yourself? The man sighs and throws up his hands. Alas, I simply cannot afford such an expense. My meager income is spent on buying the freedom of these poor souls. When demons see an Asimar customer, they raise their price and conspire to keep me from purchasing anyone. In their eyes, the, three, the glee of thwarting me is worth the lost profits. Why did they bring these Asimar women to the abyss? It pains me to say this, but I can think of only two options, and both are equally terrible. Perhaps they were to be sold to the Ten Thousand Delights, a filthy whorehouse where corrupt souls indulge in the most immoral and vulgar of pleasures. The other option is even worse. I've heard Shamira, the mistress of Elucinera, is a former celestial from the Upper Plains who once served the Everlight. This partly explains Shamira's irrational hatred of the Asimars. They she she buys my kinsfolk and takes them to the harem of ardent dreams, where she tortures them without mercy, and then she dines on their flesh. A monster. I see. I'm placing my trust in you. The lives of these unfortunate young women are in your hands. If I was an Aeon, I could do something. Ah. Uh, well, I have a few questions. I do not doubt this. You could have hardly have expected to meet a member of my race in the Abyss. Besides, the very nature of my calling, which is dictated by both altruism and compassion, must seem strange and unnatural in this place. I am used to questions and will gladly provide whatever answers I can. How do you survive in this place? It isn't easy. My ancestry alone engages demons and makes them want to try to do me harm. There have been numerous attempts on my life, and they often try to destroy the house where I shelter my wards. A particular strict ban on harming visitors from other planes may protect me from the claws and blades of my malevolent neighbors, but it is powerless to keep them from spitting at my feet, scrolling profanities on the walls of my house, or endlessly plotting against me. What are you doing here? I had a revelation sent by the merciful Sarenre. I realized that I must descend to this grim place and bear witness to its countless terrors so that I might aid those in distress. When I first visited the flesh markets, I saw young women, my kin, locked up in cages. They had been abducted from a different plane and put up for sale like goods or livestock. So I immediately purchased their freedom and brought them here. I have been freeing Asimar women who end up in Illusionary ever since. I wish I could do more. This place is teeming with tormented souls, but alas, there's a limit to my abilities, not to mention my financial means. Why do you help all the women? Because they are weaker. Their ref wow, dick. Their refinement, innocence, and beauty make them an attractive target for derision and torment. At least a man can go down fighting when his patience runs out. Most of the young women I met here were denied this final escape from the horror due to physical or spiritual weakness. Asshole. I wish my lady Ayomade could hear these words. There is a small chuckle in the angel's voice. This mortal must be kind-hearted, yet blind if he perceives spiritual weakness in those who often accomplish feats, both great and small, without a sword in hand, with nothing but passion and acceptance and dedication. 
You ask a woman to help you and then immediately add that we're physically, spiritually weak? Oh, don't get angry, I beg you. I was only talking about those poor souls at the flesh markets. I know very well what kind of merchandise the Germans drag there. They choose innocent, fragile ones. Those who, can, those who can stand up for themselves are killed on the spot. Nice save, sir. What happened to your wards? They survived truly monstrous abuses. The demons showed no mercy, subjecting these unslighted flowers to abuse and torture. In you rubbed me the wrong way so many different kinds of ways. But their hearts still bleed. Bleed still. They have withdrawn into themselves. They do not speak, not even to me. I hope one day I'll be able to return them to some semblance of normal life and send them home. I... You really don't... I could use a little help myself. Yes, throws up his hands in confusion. I fear there's little I can do to help, but please accept this gift. You have a martial look about you, and no doubt you'll make use of it. The man hands you a flask for the healing potion, and he hides his hands behind his back to show he does not expect... Okay, fair enough. May I spend a night in your home? I am very sorry. I would gladly shelter you, but there's no room in my home. My wards and I barely have room enough as it is, and we live in abject poverty. Moreover, the women need to feel safe so they can heal. They need to be surrounded by familiar faces and protected from me with the slightest hint of danger. Letting armed strangers stay in our home would bring back traumatic memories, and would be cruel under circumstances. Please accept my sincere apologies. I mean, hopefully you're okay, but goddammit, you rubbed me the wrong way. Okay, let's save here, because this is going to be... This place belongs to Lilisha, not the Baphomet or Discari, and she won't tolerate ruckus or bloodshed in the streets. There's going to be a fight here, isn't there? Um... I guess not. This is my time How, the, ha the harm of our dreams is the other place I can do stuff. I'm looking for another gate. Portal down to there. The goddess protects us. Slave, 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 slave. There's clearly a puzzle here, okay, hang on, where the right way up gets put up here. These first two seem to be linked. I'm trying to get them to- I'm trying to get them to the first two to unlink. The first two seem to be linked, see? The, the, they seem to be, like, not moving, so is there no way to, to do this? The, the third one doesn't move anymore. Hmm. I don't understand. Like, this seems to be, like, a puzzle here, but I don't know the, what the answer to the puzzle is. Slave? Let's try your trail editions. Those are there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing. Okay. Uh, Arthur and Dreams is a lootable there. Okay, there's a, there's a portal here. I can't portal back to this place, unfortunately. I cannot portal back here unless I get a, a token or something. I want to go down. Let's go, let's, go, let's go down here so we can grab whatever that chest is. Floating in the air are not by part of some crazy magic. It is the energies of chaos that they endow with their bizarre properties, and they are not even the most amazing thing that can happen in the abyss. Oh, this will, this will be the flesh markets, won't it? This will be the flesh markets. Okay, we found the flesh markets. A 
Jaws of the Jackal. These gauntlets grant a profane vigor effect and a plus two bonus of natural armor to all evil creatures summoned by the wearer of these gauntlets. If the wearer summons a Thana demon, they gain greater profane vigor effect and plus four armor bonus to AC. If the wearer summons any good outsider creature, it will attack the wearer and their allies. This is for this is probably going to be for a um, a necromancer type. If I have an, if I ever have a lich character, that's definitely something I'd give them. Um, Rhymes of the slave trader, Hepzamira. Arab, Uravak, Zark, Hepzamira. Marcus Sarkis is, is delighted to behold Lady Hepzamira and Lady Shamira. It is a great honor for him. How may he has, how may he assist you? Hepzamira is probably that one, and that's Shamira over there. Hepzamir is looking to buy some slaves. The best slaves. It's for an important job. Vark Taburglik. Allow me to present this fine specimen, an extraordinary, belligerent, destructive, and vicious slave. He killed seven hunters before his capture. Shut your mouth, meatball. Your breath stinks. I don't need gladiators or bodyguards. I'm looking for a pack of strong demons, ones who are not very bright and can obey orders. In that case, perhaps my lady would be interested in this batch of creatures recently captured in the lower city. They are all strong and quite stupid. Hepsamira, what do you want for these puny creatures? They're small fry, only fit to be cannon fodder for the Crusaders. I would suggest they seem fine to me. Finish their preparations, then send them to the harm of ardent dreams and be quick about it. And then disappear, because you don't get to engage. Oh, hey, Geocot. A dark-haired young man stares up at the ugly lump of flesh hovering in the air. Hello up there! I am blinded by your beauty. Please descend to this humble mortal and grant me the honor of a date with you. Are you out of your mind? Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Sar... Sarzakis is interpreter. The demon gives an indignant snort and begins to gurgle angrily. His tiefling slave translates, Master Sar... Zaxis says you have ten seconds to get out of his sight, or he'll command his lackeys to gouge out your eyes. All right, I can take a hint. I'm leaving. Done. Excellent source material. I'll go have a drink or two in the tavern and get to work. Let's go talk to him in a bit. Um, Mandragora. Merlong Black Mask. It's all about finding the damn gladiators, isn't it? Because again, this is, I want to, I want to, I want to, I need a damn token. Commoners, commoners, slave traders. Venture Captain Gristoff, loot. Got some, some more saving and looking over here because we're almost. I want to I be able to just teleport back here, damn it. Curs over there, guard. Uh. Junk the slave trader. A grotesquely fat demon speaks to Demoness standing in front of him. His voice irritated, it's slightly sycophantic. If you want these sweet Asimars for the 10,000 delights, cop up 50,000. Just look how delicious they are. These girls haven't even been whipped. Your clients will be clamoring for them. And after they become too worn out, they'll make a magnificent stew. I'll give you 30 if you stop talking rubbish, Dionk. Or keep going, and you can steer clear of my palace of delights. You can pleasure yourself on your own, you fat chunk of rot meat. You want to get on Javaro's bad side? Do you really want that? The Asimar slaves standing nearby try to avoid looking at the angry demoness. Even in their miserable position, they retain the mark of inner purity and nobility inherent to their kind. Puffing himself up, the fat demon answers abruptly and angrily, 50,000. For these delightful innocent creatures, your shabby and worn-out demonesses can't hope to compete with. That is my final offer. Stay away from the 10,000 delights. You can have your own little morsels of pleasure from your no your own little morsels of pleasure. You can have your own little morsels pleasure you from now on, you greedy, horny piece of shit. The disgustingly fleshy demon greets you with a wave, his arm encased in a roll of after roll of fat. Allow me to present to my living wares, the finest household slaves to serve you and entertain your body and spirit, and they can even satiate even the most exquisite cravings. The demon accompanies his last claim with a voluptuous lip smacking, looking pleased. What were you arguing about with that demoness? She wanted to buy my beautiful Asimar concubines for her palace of pleasures, the Ten Thousand Delights. Unfortunately, her common sense and good taste couldn't compete with her greed. She offered me a paltry piece, next to nothing, instead of gratefully taking the full sum for these slaves. Offering 30,000 for a group of innocent pure Asamars shipped here with utmost care, no one has laid a single finger of them. No one has taken a single bite out of them. It's simply outrageous. Who are you? 
I am Dionk, the slave trainer. When I was younger and much, much slimmer, I was a dashing raider. I spent my days abducting concubines from the other planes for the harems of the most powerful lords of the abyss. My experience, however, has shown me that raising and training pleasure slaves from an early age is a much more profitable and less, less risky business. That is why I now own the largest and most respectable slave farm, where I breed representatives of various races from different planes, though I haven't entirely given up the raiding. His deceptively slow movements and soft folds of flesh fail to hide powerful muscles beneath. This demon could likely lift a wagon with two horses by himself. Completely normal spell. Trickster is crazy. Uh, which is that one again? Is that the one that lowers the? Is that the one that lowers their? The, is that the opposite of heighten? I know that trickster gets trickster gets a lot of crazy stuff. Like a lot of trickster is insane. Minus one. Yeah, it's, it's the reverse of it's the reverse of heightened magic of heightened spell. It lowers the it lowers the spell, so you can start casting like level one fireballs. Make the insight spell a cantrip. You can take up all the way to cantrip level. Holy shit, that's crazy! You can take them to cantrip level. What do you have for sale? Just feast your eyes on them, the most exquisite pleasure slaves, raised in comfort and luxury at your service. They are well trained, neat, docile, and stand ready to become ideal servants for your manor. All of them are young and healthy, in a perfect state of ripeness. The demon bursts into sickening cackling, then whispers to you confidentially. Of course, we have made sure that their tender flesh meets the expectations of even the most demanding gourmet. They have no inkling of what awaits them, so you need not worry about fear spoiling the meat, making it tough and bitter. Only down one level. Oh, okay. You can make. Okay, so it's, you, you can't take things all the way down to. Okay. Beautiful, athletic, and well-groomed young men and women of different races smile sweetly at you. Their cheerful looks aren't marred by the slightest hint of intelligence. These slaves remind you of happy and well-fed sheep grazing in the pasture. The slaver's eyes widen as he starts to speak, nearly hyperventilating. Just recently, one of my slave hunting crews returned, bringing me a most beautiful gift. A young group of young, fresh, pure Asimar girls, full of mouth-watering innocence. All of them are beauties in their prime, caught with the utmost care. Unwounded. Shamira will take an interest in them, I wager. Because of her origin, she loves having her fun with Asimars. There are countless ways one can use such a valuable acquisition. Though if you ask me, the smartest way is to treat yourself to a medium-rare fillet with a meat rich meaty gravy. And also let me fill my spubble with courting ray all the way from level 1 to level 5. And just since I have heightened too. <laughs> your, your spell book is nothing but scorching ray. I cast one spell and one spell only. You are... You are... Um, What's her face from Konosuba? Uh, Christ, what's her name from Konosuba? The one, who, the, the the girl who only casts explosion. The red one. It's been a long time since I watched Konosuba. I know Darkness. I know Aqua. I forgot the main character's name. It starts with an M, doesn't it? The the girl's name. Yeah, there's a character in Konosuba who literally only casts one spell. She just casts explosion. Nothing else. The Asimar women look pale and scared, but even in captivity they manage to retain their dignity and refuse to let the demons savor their fear. As Dionk continues his nauseating commentary, they raise their chins higher and do their best to maintain cold, detached expressions. Now I want to save here, because there's a lot of shenanigans here. One her. Talk to Latvork. Two. I kind of want to get hands on a on the thing. A tough-looking demon with a rough, rough, cruel face in the hands of a seasoned warrior greets you with a grin. Looking to buy slaves, eh? We have just sold off the shipment they captured in the last raid. I'm Kurz, captain of the bloody bitch. Who are you? Who am I? I'm Kurz, known by some as Kurz got stabbed, captain of the legendary bloody bitch, and the most famous damn pirate in the Midnight Isles. You must be a landlubber who's never set foot aboard an airship if you haven't heard of me. A pirate. I, heard, oh, I overheard someone in the tavern say that all pirates are crazy scoundrels and merciless thugs. Now I understand why. They fly between islands and airships. Can you imagine that? They fly. In the sky. I can't even look at it without shuddering. And they live up there. They're completely deranged. Do you know me, Laura? That nut job? <laughs> her entire crew must be wimps and weaklings if they haven't slit such a leader's throat or fed her to Ishiar's beasts yet. You can't help but notice that, despite Kir's dramatic bravado, a spark of fear gleams in his eyes. Tell me more about being a pirate. What exactly do you want to know? 
The life of a pirate ship consists of four things. His vessel, his crew, his experience, and Pazuzu's patronage, of course. You already have wings of your own. Why do you need a flying ship? Curse eyes you with suspicion, as if searching for signs of mockery in your face. Sure. And what do you propose I do with all the loot? Carried on my back? What about the slaves we took into the cargo hold? The ship has a big flying treasure test and also provides a fair amount of cover from arrows and spells that rain down on us during boardings. Tell me about your vessel. You'll recognize my bloody bitch right away by the huge skull decorating her prow. We secured that trophy near Vasglar, and there was a great fight for it. A few other captains wanted to lay their hand on it as well. Aside from the skull, I've done good work on the bloody bitch. You can't find a better attack vessel. Her broadside can take a dragon strike, her three-quarter sails can catch any wind, and her ballista don't rely on loudest spears, only alchemical fire. And what kind of crew do you have on board? The toughest rogues and cutthroats you could ever want. They're my handprint collection. Each one as bad as the next. They're the most notable, re notorious rabble, the most infamous scoundrels you could ever find in the abyss. They'd sell their own mothers into slavery for chipped coffer. Turn on me? Never. Nobody else could lend them a better deal than I can. If they ditched me, they wouldn't make it three steps before taking a knife in the back. So they've got no choice but to follow me till the end. How many ships have you plundered? Puffing out his chest a little, the, de the demon offers a fang to leering grin, then answers with all the cutthroat swagger he can muster. The bloody bitch is well known in the Midnight Isles, and her back sails sows terror wherever she goes. I can't count how many poor souls I've sent to Dagon. I was leading the charge, saber in hand, back in the days when Vexelia... Valexia was flashing her bare tits in the skies over Lucianera, and when Zephorian, that old rapscallion, ruled the city. As for loot, ah, the treasures that have passed through my hands, I spent them all on booze. You mention Pazuzu quite often. Do you worship him? Sure I do. Only total idiots don't worship the demon lord of the sky and winged creatures. Well, at least if we're talking about aeronauts. All the storms, wind currents, and beasts who feed on those currents, they all bend to his will. That's why I bombard Lord Pazuzu with my prayers as often as I can. Tell me a thrilling tale. You like gory stories, eh? Fine. Once we were floating by Migorg when our lookout spotted the wreckage of a ship caught in a hurricane. So we decided to search for cargo, but instead we only found a sailor who was clutching at the wreckage. We fished him out, brought him to his senses, hung him up on the mast, and questioned him properly. Our ship's cook knows how to loosen tongues with his knife. Long story short, the poor shot spilled that he was a pirate himself. His ship had set sail from one of Alir's deserted islands, where they hid part of their spoils. He smelled a windfall, so he rushed to Alir. But Alir, that place isn't for the faint-hearted. Predatory vines, carnivorous flowers that breathe out clouds of poisonous pollen, and walking brushes that surround you and pounce on you and sting you with thorns till you die. But did I mention the toxic springs? You're a demon, you're immune to poison. Or the flies that crawl into your ears while you sleep and lay their eggs inside your brain, driving you insane. All in all, the place was a nightmare. And we found ourselves right in the middle of it all. Three times our prisoner told us where to check for the stash. Each time we dug, but all we found was dirt and bones. By the third attempt, that damned island had already wiped out half the crew. We realized the asshole was playing us, so we gutted him. You know what we saw then? All his entrails were covered with whitish mold and overgrown with some spongy fungus. His heart, his guts, his brain, that gunk was everywhere. According to our ship's dock, that fungus controlled every one of the sailor's steps. He got infected on a layer, then left the island to lure in fresh fodder for the plants. We fled as fast as we could, but for a long, long time I couldn't believe those damn weeds got so smart they were able to trick us. That's good to know. Okay, let's go. May Pazuzu fill your sails with wind, stranger, but no more than mine. Let's go. Hey, Suture! Suture's here. Um, let's go talk to... Um... Where's... Here you go. Let's go talk to you. Hang on, let's go, let's go talk to Sar um, Saraxis. I don't know. I'm who the, who's in charge here so I can get... I want to get a token from somebody, goddammit. I need a token from somebody. Slave trader? Nope. Okay. Major Captain Gristoff, you're a captain. I doubt you have anything I want. Greetings, I am Count Christoph Rolano. I have the honor of serving as the venture captain of the Pathfinder Society, heading the branch of the Society in Illusionera and its adjacent territories. If you have the need of the services of Pathfinders, I can be with Holy shit, the Pathfinders have a base here. Be the retraining guy. Casting a sharp look at you, Christoph hands you a sealed letter. I admit, your appearance here did not surprise me, because I have recently received this letter. It is addressed to you, and I have held it in anticipation of your arrival. The letter appears in rough but legible handwriting of a person who doesn't write often. Greetings, Commander. I'm sorry to bother you with any requests while you are busy and difficult with a dangerous mission, but my situation is extremely serious. I have found the trail of the Spinner of Nightmares. Her agent in Erosian fell into our hands and revealed during interrogation that the last known lair of the Spinner was in Illusionera. 
in a block called the Ten Thousand Delights. Knowing the habits of the Spinner of Nightmares, I am inclined to believe that she used to live in the heart of the giant brothel. My poor Lurie would still languish in this horrible place. I am begging you to look for her or any traces of the Spinner. What's in it? The tone of the Adventure Captain is cold, just like it's been delivered from the crown of the world. I am not in the habit of reading letters addressed to others, and I have no idea why you would think otherwise. However, knowing Venture Captain Hillorv, I would assume that it is about his persistent vendetta against a dangerous sorcerer called the Spinner of Nightmares. How did Hillorv deliver this letter to you? Christoph smiles with amusement. The Pathfinder Society has many agents across many different planes. They, along with a touch of magic, provide us with most of the widespread and effective mail delivery service you can imagine. The IGD has been done. I need a skilled partner, get a new person. Need retraining. Oh, to help the society with writing funds. Society has fixed chariot rates, preventing corruption. I personally find this practice very wise. A donation for the prisoners of the abyss is 50,000 gold coins. The price is high, but it will give freedom to the unfortunate, so be it. The base profit is not worth more than life. Sure, take 50 gold coins. The Pathfinder Society is grateful for your help, Commander. The unfortunate folk enslaved by demons will glorify your name throughout the abyss. Okay, so I just gave 50,000 good people what? I still have 10 times that amount, so 11 times that amount, so I'm not too overly worried. I think I'm going to talk to you, just because you feel like the person in charge of the whole damn thing. A demon who looks like a ball of lumpy melting flesh hovers in the air. He clenches a whip with his hand. The demon emanates an aura of confidence and authority. He snorts sternly at a skinny tiefling standing nearby, whose eyes are skillfully sewn shut with black silk threads studded with diamond chips. The demon mutters something incomprehensible to you. The tiefling speaks to you in a soft voice of devoid of emotion. Master Sarzaxis welcomes you to the flesh markets, visitor from another plane. Notice right away that you are a person of means. Though he himself has no interest in doing business with you, your presence benefits the flesh markets, so Master Sarzaxis is prepared to spend you some of his spare you some of his time. This slave will interpret his words for you, for he loathes speaking in any language except the one he used in his home world. The suture's hideous face is marked with desperation. Overcoming his pride, he reaches out to you with his gnarled hand, beseeching your help with a humiliating gesture. Ivo listens carefully, and just as she carefully examines the tiefling's sewn eyes, his loathsome master and his surroundings of the slave market, then in a tone that brooks no objection, she declares, everything in this place is horrible. Absolutely everything. Um, who are you, demon? demon? Demon answers with a lengthy barking tirade, as the interpreter listens carefully to every grunt. Master Sarzaxis comes from a remote corner of the abyss, extremely far from these parts. Practically no one in all of Illusionaria has heard of the magnificent place that is Master Sarzaxis' homeland. He would happily return there because that place is superior to all the other elms of the abyss. Damn, candy. I'm trying to keep my voice going. However, Master Sarzaxis found himself fascinated with the concept of slavery. In his homeland, the idea of owning another sentient being does not exist. The common practice there is to kill anyone who is not like you. Master Sarzaxis has spent a lot of time studying the sophisticated art of slaveholding, and has become the most respected slave trader in the whole evolution era. He is equally disgusting inside and out. Horrible, horrible demon. The most repulsive of all I've seen. Wow. Lawful? Really? Slavery is disgusting. Listening intently to the displeased hoots, the tiefling adds a light touch of condemnation to his monotonous speech. Master Sarzaxis is deeply indifferent to your opinion regarding the slave trade and the order he has established here at the flesh markets. Master Sarzaxis does not find it necessary to listen to the advice of strangers who have come from a primitive plane that will soon be conquered. <laughs> Lawful is we live in a society, absolutely. So as Axis' displeased growls makes everyone turns around, their eyes are filled with fear and a readiness to flee immediately. Are you a Sarz Axis' slave? The demon bursts into indignant gurgling. Even without a sing understanding a single word, you quickly conclude that he is displeased. Master Sarz Axis wishes you to cease your attempts to bypass him and communicate directly with his property. The provenance of his property is a matter of concern to Sarz Axis alone, no one else. I'd like to see your slaves. I'm afraid Master Sarxaxis must reject your offer. All his slaves were caught to satisfy personal requests by the utmost esteemed Upper City residents. 
Master Sarsaxis is the most influential of the slavers. He can't afford to waste his time on something as pointless as negotiating with a stranger. Why did Hepsamira and Shamira buy your slaves? Lady Hepsamira is extremely secretive. No one knows what she's up to, and no one wants to ask unnecessary questions because Lady Hepsamira has already proven she's quite powerful. Sleeping around her business could be dangerous. When Lady Shamira brings Lady Hepsamira with her, and she says she needs stupid but strong slaves, Master Sarsaxis never asks questions and does not hold a grudge for the meatball nickname. Master Sarsaxis is very wise and shows restraint. One of the demon guards clearly grows interested in the conversation and unconsciously leans forward. Sarsaxis whips him across the muzzle with a lightning flash blow. The demon's head explodes like a watermelon dropped from a great height. The interpreter comments on the execution with indifference. Master Sarsaxis would like to remind everyone that unnecessary, unnecessary curiosity can be very harmful for servants, especially if his curiosity regarding the master's business. I'd like to know more about the flesh markets. Master Sarsaxis finds your curiosity commendable. He is willing to outline the basic principles of the flesh markets and its... The tiefling falls silent for a while, listening carefully to the demon's croaking, then he finds the correct word. It's hierarchy. He's also willing to explain the intricacies of the highly respected occupation of slaver. It would take a lot... It would take a lot of effort to find a place more disgusting than this one. Even here in the Abyss. In the old days, my warriors and I broke many slave collars and led countless slaves out of the Abyss. What is this place? This place is called the Flesh Markets because here one can buy living and healthy flesh. Slaves for housekeeping, slaves for carnal pleasure, fighting slaves, sacrificial slaves, slaves of an edible nature. Every day, hundreds of slaves are shipped here and hundreds of customers come to buy them. Where do you get your slaves? The majority of the slaves are captives seized during raids on other planes. Master Sarsaxis is happy to inform you that Galarian is our main supply channels. The Abyss itself has supplies a fair share of slaves as well. Demons have no prejudice against enslaving their kin. Demonic slaves are more hard-wearing and last longer than most slaves from most other planes. And who runs the flesh markets? Master Sarsaxis has the honor of being the informal head of the flesh markets because he is the supplier to the upper city. All the individuals who dare challenge Master Sarsaxis' supremacy renounced their false claims, became his slaves, and now proudly wear his personal insignia, carved into their faces with cold iron. With a demanding crack of the whip, Sarsaxis calls one of the demons standing nearby. The latter kneels hastily, obediently hides his eyes, and extends his palm up. Sarsaxis seems satisfied with his display of obedience, so he lets the demon go by whipping him lightly over the shoulders, leaving a ruby-red welt on his skin. As you may have noticed, Master Sarsaxis' authority here in the flesh markets is absolute. I see. Sell me that dretch. Sarsaxis begins to snort, spraying saliva. He babbles quickly, which causes short, uncertain pauses in the slave's speech. This stretch, like the other demons of the shipment, is set aside for Lady Hepzamira. Without a doubt, this lazy waste of flesh caught today in the lower city will never prove to be a useful worker, but he still belongs to his new mistress. He is, he is a very influential person. Therefore, trying to deceive her would be disrespectful and dangerous, and Master Sarsaxis would never commit such a foolish act. He resents your suggestion that he is capable of doing anything of the kind. Master Sarsaxis is then insulted and outraged. There are not many vices that can surpass the greed of demons, but pride is one of them. Imagine what tremendous power it has when the two are combined. As disgusting as it is for me to give this advice, listen to me. If this scoundrel is insulted, offer him gold. Not as part of the deal, but rather as a compensation for the insult in recognition of his high status. Perhaps gold can compensate for the insult I've inflicted. The demon's grumbling abates slightly as a flicker of greed appears in his eyes. Master Sarsaxis finds your idea very reasonable. He kindly agrees to accept the sum of 30,000 gold coins to atone for the insult you've inflicted. Taking into account your unfamiliarity with local customs, Master Sarsaxis will not demand her hand or eye in recompense. For his part, Master Sarsaxis considers it undesirable to keep this wretch in his stock, for he has the cause of your disagreement. As a gesture of reconciliation, he will like to immediately release him and drive him out of this says, so this unpleasant incident might be considered settled and forgotten. Fine. Let's leave all grievances and misunderstandings behind. The teaching translates from so this satisfied snort, though it's wholly unnecessary. You understand its meaning perfectly well. Master Shard Axis congratulates you on a successful purchase. Hey, Suture. The dredge approaches you, glancing cautiously around. He mumbles in a quiet voice that only you can hear his words. I have no idea why Hepsimir needs slaves. From what I've heard, they don't live long. Becoming her property is a death sentence, no doubt about it. Meaning you saved me. So, I... I guess... I... Suture appears confused. It seems this miscreation is not accustomed to being shown mercy and simply doesn't know how to express his thanks. How are you captured? I have been wandering the lower city, searching for something. Never you mind what. 
I mean, that's not what I meant to say. It's a personal matter. Yeah, that's the right way to put it. So I was roaming around chatting with us all in sundry when the slave hunters appeared and started chasing us. They threw those who survived in a cage and brought us here. This is a typical occurrence in the abyss. Social dynamics, it's called. The strong and slave the weak. What will you do now? With a gloomy glance at you, Zutra gives a vague answer. I'll continue my search, I will. That won't be easy, but I'll prove to her that I'm smarter and wilier than she thinks. The director's expression is determined, even severe. What were you looking for? Don't ask. That's none of your business. Very well. The suture hesitates, nervously scratching the back of his neck. He repeats... He repeatedly opens his mouth to say something, but nothing comes out. Finally, he starts to mumble incoherently. I am... I mean, you... Just be careful. That's what I'm saying. With a martyr sigh, Sutra turns around, relieved to lose himself once again in Lucianera's war in the valleyways. Oh, God, did someone give me a bl Oh, we can loot him. Nice. Here. Um... Slave trader, no. Curs, yeah, fun. Talk to who? Talk to you. Someone give me a damn token for this place. There, loot, loot. Does anyone have a damn token for this place? Trust in yourself. I can do this. Oh, wow. Really? Okay, that, 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 that entire thing is moving. Sure, fair enough. Yeah, this, this is this is this this place will do my head in absolutely. Uh, slaves, 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 slaves. Krebus. The tall fin vendor is swathed in loose black robe. He's not a demon, but it's impossible to determine his race. His expressionless and hairless face is covered in tattoos and looks like he's made of wax. His eyes are motionless. As you approach, the black figure almost doubles over as he sweeps into a low bow. The vendor moves with a supernatural delicacy and grace impossible for a human. He extends his arms covered in tattoos. The ink on his palms comes to life and forms the words. Greetings, I am Krebus, vendor of magical lunatics. The voice of the hand sounds contemplative. I can sense shadows. Evil shadows that once served their old master. Fiery Avaxis, whom I fought valiantly but had not the strength to defeat. Beware this one, champion, for he is linked to powers both formidable and cunning. Something inside you awakens and casts a fiery glance at the slaver. You can see the darkness curling under the layer of his skin, or rather a shadow resembling darkness, a demon woven of shadows. What kind of slaves can you offer? With a slight nod, Krebus points at a group of slaves standing nearby. All of them are completely motionless, and their backs unnaturally straight. They seem to be drugged. Their eyes are entirely black, without hint of pupil, and in the depths, tiny blue sparks flicker like stars in the night sky. From time to time, some of the slaves utter something uncanny or barely comprehensible, and fall silent again. Tiny ink glyphs begin to appear rapidly on the slaver's palm as if drawn by a skill scribe. High lunatics. Magical ingredients for ritual sacrifices. Dissolved in blood. Fermentation finished. Distillation finished. Deposited into practical, self-prepared storage units inside slaves' bodies. High magic potential. The goods were examined and certified by the extremed Willidus. Approved for trading. I can sense darkness inside them. Not mundane darkness, which is merely the absence of light, but an embodied darkness that begets evil and possesses awareness instead of being emptiness and nothing. What cursed substances did he pump into these unfortunates? Keep an eye on them, for the darkness inside them waits for the right moment to be born into this world. What have you done to these slaves and why? Snakes made of lettuce crawl over Krebus's hands. They are no longer slaves. They are vessels of magic. Their bodily fluids were drained and replaced by potions and decoctions imbued with energies. Their dried mummies were filled with the dampness of magic and their dehydrated brains were filled with the mysteries of the universe. Top quality, the Hindrian, as they say here in Illusion Era. Who are you and where did you come from? Three words appear in the vendor's palms. Krebus, from everywhere. The secretive stranger smiles lifelessly and shrugs. His sloughed flowing movements are too smooth, are so smooth as to be almost indiscernible, as if he were not a creature of flesh, but rather of melting wax. The slaver opens his mouth wide, but you see neither teeth nor tongue inside. The ink on his palm forms the words, I can communicate. Well, show me your magic wares. The slaver gives you another low bow. One of his eyes suddenly rolls out of his eye socket with a neat, gentle movement. Krebus touches the eyeball and returns it to its normal place. And he points at the wares. Okay, what do we actually have here? Phantasmal Guide. Plus five Ghost Touch Quarterstaff. You can cast illusion spells as they were able to... Oh, really? No, the course of the War Mage is too good. If you, do, if you didn't have that, we'd use Phantasmal Guide, but course of the War Mage. As plus two to the DC of all saving throws, 
gives you plus four chance to overcome spell resistance. I also have like, yeah, so fine. Uh, boots of Arcane Persistence. Whenever the wearer of these boots cast the same spell for the fourth time during the day, the next spell becomes quickened as if using the quick, quickened spell feat. Oh, is that, is, that, is that what's happening with you? It's, you know, it's specifically it's in a row with you, okay. Ring of design, Demise. Whenever the wearer of this ring makes an attack of opportunity, the enemy must pass the port you save or be knocked down. The ring also grants a plus two competence bonus on attack damage rolls with two handed weapons. Rome of Malice can only, be a walker, can only be worn by a lawful evil monk. Slimy skin, Rome Cords. Scrolls of Mass, Scroll of Mass Heal. Scroll of Infer Firestorm, Bless Me, Only Person, Death Ward, as Raised Dead, Quarterstaff, Scrolls of Resurrection, Scrolls of Breath of Life, Wands, Wands of Any Kinds, Greater Maximize Meta Magic, Greater Quicken. Scrolls of Dragonkind. Scroll of... Is there a scroll of, a scroll of weird here? One of one, one of Dragon's Breath. A bunch of crap, okay. Do you have weird? No, you don't. Okay, fair enough. Alright, I need to see... I need to see about all the stuff I'm gonna buy. Someone give me a damn... Who? I need to find someone's gonna. Let's try you, Ramiz of the Slave Trader. Eyes of the translucent Marilith of carefully observes her surroundings. It seems this does not mean an image, but a projection of the creature's consciousness while her physical body is located elsewhere, far from here. Next to the Marilith fizzles, fidgets a shriveled mandragora, which ushers occasional displeased shriek. Ah, visitor from another plane. I am Ramiza, also known as the Sloud Skin, or the Sloughed Skin, and I am no simple vendor but a true artist of the slave trade. My warehouses currently stand empty, but we can always arrange for a custom order. What would you like to inquire? Perhaps your enemy's son or daughter, bound by magic and powerless in the face of anything you might wish to do to them? An attractive person who has once dared reject you? A little brat who bullied you as a child? Lucianir is the city where all your dreams come true. The Marilith licks her lips, especially if they are dirty, bloody, and sweet dreams of possession or revenge. Once, when I was very little, an Azata stepped on my tail. He didn't even say he was sorry. But if you ever think I would ask you to catch him for me, you are a truly foolish and unscrupulous demon. I would never deal with someone like you. If the memory still stings once I'm back in Elysium, I'll find that Azat and step on my tail myself. Oh, what a sleet and a drawable dragon. And from Elysium, no less. How cute. Don't try to suck up to me. And I'll suck up when I see one. I would proudly turns up her nose. What do you mean by an artist of the slave trade? While others trade for material gain, I do it for the art. Unlike... Others, I'm not involved in the faceless shipment of goods. Each slave who passes through my hands has a personality. Each sale is a spiritual experience. Not long ago, I sent my hunters to track down and capture a brave rebel fighting for the freedom of his people. And then I sold him, chained and dressed as a pleasure slave, to the tyrant who had enslaved his homeland. Some may call it cliche, but I call it a classic. So what I see standing here is just your projection? Certainly. It's not as safe to appear in the flesh markets in person, especially for someone like me. You see, before I used to switch to this line of work, I was a humble gardener. I used to grow mandragoras. The Marilith pats her ugly pet on the head. There's a well-known fact that mandragoras grow if you water an ordinary weed with demon blood, or if you plant it in a demon's corpse. The allies, lovers, and masters of those I turned into fertilizer are still searching for me. Thus, I conduct my business remotely. In the same way, when I have slaves to sell, I first I show their projections, and only offer them after they're sold do I deliver them to the buyer. Okay, there's nothing really special for you here. Wrong black mask. You're the gladiator guy. I think we've spoken to pretty much everyone here other than... Doesn't anyone have a damn token for this place? Oh, climb for the rooftops. Blue tools. Get down again. It's just not my lucky day. That did hurt. You know what? We've like, overrun by about 20 minutes now. I'll carry this on next week. I want to find a place so I can go back and rest and come back here without having to travel, because at the moment I have no tokens for the middle city. Because if I have, if I if, if I go back via a portal to the lower city, I can't come back here without having to go the entire way around of coming up the side, etc, etc. Which isn't a problem, I know how to do that now, but still. Besides, you have to go, you have to go to the 
Harm of Ardent Dreams, you have to go to the Ten Thousand Delights. So we'll save. And we'll call it next time. How big of a deal is it really if you bleed into streaming center back? It's not really, but I'm at the moment I'm wandering around aimlessly and my and my voice is going. It's not a big deal. It's just more that my voice is going and I'm wandering around aimlessly. So I would either save my voice. Because usually whenever I stream, I don't do much talking at all on the Sunday. Like Sunday, I, I pretty much spend the day not even speaking just to save my voice for Monday. Because Friday and Saturday tends to be quite heavy. So it's more me just saving my voice for next week. Beric, are you going to be capable? Yeah, tea and honey, absolutely. Tea and honey all the time. Like strepsils and stuff like that. Beric, are you going to be capable of streaming on Monday? Is it, will it be feasible for you to stream on Monday, or, is it, or should I find an alternative? Probably not the best place to be asking you this question. I don't know. Fair enough. I'd rather you take care of yourself, personally. Because, you know... Stuff is serious, y'all. Who's live at the moment? Da -da -da -da. I'm thinking of doing a test stream tomorrow to see if I can handle it. Okay. Don't push yourself, though, because it's more important that you fix things and don't screw things up than you doing a stream, I think. No one's going anywhere. At least I'm not. I doubt anyone else is. I'm thinking doing... Yeah, you said that already. I'm just, I'm just rereading you that. Is there, any, is there any of your bunch live? Can, uh, nope. Hmm. Alright, we'll, we'll do the usual Saturday thing. I'll just leave you to your thoughts and contemplations, and you can think about what we've, what we've achieved this week. Um, sit at home and think about it and see what we've learned this week, because I've got to sort of sort things out for, like, uploading and stuff to YouTube, put them on my VOD channel. I've made... Um, I've made... Um, playlists on my... Uh, Fey Witch Clay, fine. What did Twitch do? Okay. <laughs> cool. You 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 made the things. So we'll, we'll, we'll raid into Fey Witch Clay. Giving your whole spiel about no, you don't get any. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Night, Collective Fruit. We'll go raid, we'll go raid Fae Witch Clay, uh, who seems to be doing makers and crafting. No mix Sanrio puzzle chill time. Cool. It was some fun times, and I'll catch you all next time, folks. Have a good thing. I'll see you on Monday, either with more time with Beric, or I'll find something else to do in the meantime. Um. See you then. Take care of yourselves. Have a good Sunday. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.